two knockouts. Stop it. Two knockouts with 20-some fights. Is it a good look? No, it's not a good look. Has it been being hand-fed opponents? I don't know. We're about to find out. Now, your boy Ortiz Jr. is a dog. And they saying that he is ready for Tans Crawford next. Let me rewind that. They said he's ready for Tans Crawford next. Or Errol Spence. Stop it. Or Errol Spence. Wow. So, Boost Enos, they saying he's ready for Tans Crawford next. Or Errol Spence. Stop it. What they need to be doing is putting Boots Enos in the ring with Ortiz Jr. And the winner gets the winner between Tans Crawford and Errol Spence. If the fight finally happens at K9 Boxing. What's up, Max? What it do, Benny? Warren, appreciate y'all for tapping in. Welcome to K9 Boxing. And once you tap in, hit the like button. If you're not a subscriber, subscribe to the channel and hit the notifications. So, yeah, welcome to the watch party where I'm just commentating. I'm not showing the fight because I can't show the fight. Because if I show the fight, they're going to take my live down. And we don't want that to happen. So we going to be live, stay live with each other as I commentate the fights. El Toro, what's up, champ? Ur, ur, ur. Hashtag dogs of us. So, yeah, we we back in the cut. And I'm happy that's another weekend of boxing. Because not that we, we don't get boxing like we used to get it. Remember, Friday Night Fights? Yeah, Friday Night Fights on ESPN. Do y'all remember Tuesday Night Fights? Tuesday Night Fights on ESPN. USA Boxing. Y'all don't remember all that. But if y'all don't remember it, I'm putting y'all up on it. So, boxing is the highest paid sport. For one night, you can make a whole bunch of money. Now, a lot of people think that just because a person made $4 million in one night, he did it all in one night. Stop it. No, 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 no. It's a long training camp. A very long training camp. To prepare to go to war, you need time. That's right. You need time. I'm talking about a lot of time. Especially if you're trying to be the best. If you want to show everybody that egg, you know, an egg like this one. And you want to show how people, how sharp you are to the people that's watching? You need time. So Jake Paul was not giving Hasim Rodman Jr. time. And that was smart on his part. But once he saw that Hasim Rodman Jr. was making him wait comfortably, he pulled the plug. Now, the deadline for the weigh-in was supposed to be, I think, two, three, four hours before you actually got on the scale to see how much you weighed. And the commission said, stop it. It's over. It's over. Because they didn't want to mess that money up. Now, Showtime is one of my favorite networks. I fought on Showtime. I cashed out. I made the most money in the ring on Showtime. But Showtime is biased. HBO is biased. ESPN is biased. You got to remember at the end of the day, if it don't make dollars, it don't make sense. So I understand. When you get all this money behind the person that you are promoting, the person that you are pushing, you're going to do whatever you can to make sure he succeeds. So, Jake Paul was in a real bout, was in a real match. And um, I seen Robin Jr. done put up footage of Jake Paul running. 
He's a runner. He's a track star. <laughs> he's a runner. He's a track star. He got Jake Paul in the ring running from him. And if he think he's ever going to get that fight with Jake Paul, now that he's an exposed Jake Paul, stop it. It's not going to happen now. Sorry to say. Unless the fans demand that fight. If the fans say, we want to see Jake Paul in the ring with Haseen Rodman Jr. Now, Haseen Rodman Jr. made sure his 15 minutes of fame went past 15 minutes. He made it travel. I'm talking about a lot of these NBA players, like some of these NBA basketball players. They travel a lot. But they don't say anything because they want to make the game bigger than life. You know, we would have never got away with shooting three-pointers at half court. But then comes Steph Curry and LeBron James. They would have never lasted in the era of the bad boys. But I appreciate y'all, man, for tapping in. Hashtag dogs are us. And when you tap in, you definitely better tap that like button. Matter of fact, whoop that trick. Whoop that trick. You gotta whoop that trick for me. You hear me? Whoop the trick, which is the like button. And um, like I say, man, a bark, a bite, an overhand right. Welcome to K9 Boxing. Spider Moose, El Toro, Diego, 714 Cruz. Hashtag my dogs in them. That's right. So, yeah, Ortiz, you know, he's another one of them guys, man, that they pushing. You know, young guy. Fresh cut, ain't never lost. You know, we always got to have somebody that we put everything into. Whether it's somebody with red hair, like Canelo Everest, or whether it's like somebody clean cut, tall, you know, um, smooth, can go both ways, southpaw, orthodox, um, like Boots Ennis. The next man must carry the torch. Now, even though... Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford is in a prime. You got to look for the next man. The next man up. So the next man up, and who they pushing is Ortiz Jr. Now, he's not going to drop the ball in a fight tonight. Because at the end of the day, guess what? He is in there with a pillow puncher. When you're in there with somebody with only two knockouts, and over 20 some fights, that lets you know for sure. The man can't pop. I'm talking about like Pepsi. I'm talking about like Mountain Dew. The man can't pop. So at the end of the day, you can take chances. Guess what? You know how they say, if you can't stand the heat, get out the kitchen. Well, it won't be no heat in the kitchen. And the kitchen is the ring. And it will not be any heat coming at Ortiz Jr. So he would be walking his opponent down. I'm talking about going and go get him. I'm talking about he going to be on him like a K-9 t-shirt. Stop it. It's over. It's over. How long? Not long. It won't be long at all. I believe. And it's going to make Ortiz Jr. look good. One reason why it's going to make Ortiz Jr. look good because his opponent, who he is fighting, is undefeated. Now think about it. If you're matching up, if you're matching up Ortiz Jr. with anybody other than Errol Spence or Terrence Crawford or Boots Enos, I'ma say, stop it! He gonna whoop that trick. Whoop that trick. Because he's being pushed for a reason. The boy can fight. But at the end of the day, his promoters are not going to drop the ball. They're not going to drop the ball. Because if they drop the ball, they're going to mess up their investments. And what's the sense of investing in somebody and then dropping the ball? What up, though, H Money? Hashtag the mob. A bark, a bite, the overhand right. Welcome to K-9 Boxing.
So yeah, hashtag dogs us. And we live, that's right, on Twitter. We live on Instagram. No, no, we live on YouTube. We're going to get the Instagram. SB, we live on Facebook. Okay. But we live. H Money, appreciate you for tapping in, my doggy. Much love. I wouldn't mind seeing Keith Thurman in the ring with Virgil Ortiz. But right now, I think Keith Thurman is trying to get in the ring with Danny Garcia because it's a lower risk and higher reward. You know, these older fighters, and I'm not saying they passed their prime, but when I say these older fighters, I'm talking about fighters that done made money, done won world titles, may still have their world titles, may have lost their world title. But those guys that done been in the ring for some years, on top of years, done made bread on top of bread, done made that cheddar. I'm talking about that cheese. Those guys are a little older and not fresh, fresh. So it don't make sense to go backwards. You know, I always say, man, you know, we looking through the windshield, you know. When you driving, you know, you focus on what's in front of you. Every seldom you will look back to see who's behind you, you know. There ain't nobody that can stop you, you know, like the police because you're speeding. Then you, you care less about who behind you. So Th Keith Thurman is like in the windshield. You know, you, you could see him through the windshield. Um, Danny Garcia is through the windshield. Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford is in the windshield, through the windshield. Now, Virgil Ortiz and Boots Enos, are through it in the windshield too. But they the guys is like, you know, fighters don't want to see right now because it's a high risk and low reward. And if it don't make dollars, it don't make sense. If Errol Spence fights Boots Enos and wins, what are they going to say? They going to say he wasn't ready. But if Boots Enos fight Errol Spence and wins, they gonna say he a beast, man. He just beat Errol Spence. So, do it really make sense? And do it make enough dollars when these guys are really good and they being pushed like as if they as good as Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford? But if they stock as big as Terrence Crawford and Errol Spence, will Terrence Crawford make the kind of money? Versus Boos Ennis or Virgil Ortiz that he would against Errol Spence. Stop it! No. So it don't make dollars. So it don't make sense. And like I say, we looking forward. We going forward. So, and two, Boos Ennis, Virgil Ortiz can win a belt. And... and, and you know, can actually generate that money. We are not thinking about it. I'm saying we as if I was the promoters or the managers or the advisor of Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford. Get your stock up. I'm talking about get your stock up because no sense of taking that chance. Just like when I was the current champ, Canelo Alvarez was the current champ. Floyd Mayweather was the current champ. And Errol Spence was not thought of. Terrence Crawford wasn't thought of. But if they could have gotten in the ring with me and fought me and beat me, wow, stock would have been up. But guess what? I'm not looking backwards. I was too much of a high risk and low reward for Floyd Mayweather. For Canelo Alvarez. When I went out there and knocked out Corey Spinks on Showtime, Oscar De La Hoya was like, stop!
stop it. No, we're not about to fight that boy. You hear me? Too strong. Too devastating. Too mean. I'm the Black Rocky. That's right. Hashtag glove up. Hashtag anybody can get it. So Miguel Cotto was barking down my block. But the money wasn't there. I told him and his team to holler at my manager, SB. And SB said, they ain't really want it. They ain't really want it. So we had to move on. We were forced to move on. And that's what you got to do. You have to move on. Don't go backwards. Go forward. Through the windshield. Through the windshield. What's up, everybody? He's tapping in. Il Toro say, K9, you're looking fresh. Yes, sir. Thank you, brother. Thank you. So the fight will be on at 9 p.m., so we got 22 minutes before we end the game. Keith, what's up, Keith? My top H Money say the top five welterweights in boxing right now. Man, listen. The top five, it's easy to say who the top four is. Um, Errol Spence, Terrence Crawford, um, Virgil Ortiz. Boots, Enos, the fifth guy. I can't even think of the fifth guy. Is, is it five of them out there? What are you with me saying who the fifth guy is? Y'all tell me who the, is the fifth guy. Because um, Keith Thurman is down there. But I'm trying to figure out if he's the fifth guy. Because he's talking about fighting Danny Garcia at junior middleweight. So will that actually make him the fifth guy? I don't know. What's up, D? Angelo, what's up, D? I don't know. Absolutely, Spider Moose. Spider Moose said, Boots needs to pay some serious dudes. He gets a fight versus a top-class fighter like Crawford or Thurman or Spence. That's true. Now, I can see him getting a fight with um Keith Thurman because, you know, Keith Thurman that fell off the planet Earth. You know, when, once you're hot, you're hot. And once you're not, you're not. <laughs> so that's what it is with him. Oh, Connor Ben. There we go. That's the fifth one right there. Yeah, but hey, Connor Ben. They go to the fifth guy right there. Oh, Ugas. Yeah, Ugas. Hey, Ugas pretty good, but Errol Spence might have relocated his, his um passport. <laughs> he might not want to fight in America anymore. It's over. It might be over for him. But no, I would have to say Conor Ben because Ugas lost. We don't know where he's going from here. If anything, you put um, Keith Thurman in there with Ugas. Or, you know, put Keith Thurman in there with Danny Garcia. But, I I mean, you know, I think it would be a good fight with him and Danny Garcia, but I hate for him to be able to, you know, not pay his dues all over again. You know, when I lost my fight, I had to pay my dues all over again. It, I had to go backwards. I had to moonwalk like Michael Jackson and get back in the game. So Keith Thurman might have to do the moonwalk like Michael Jackson to get back in the game, you know. But he paid his dues. He got a big enough name, you know, to be able to fight a big name. And I'm pulling for him. Definitely a real dude. Sean and Unseen Boxing. Yeah, so it's going down, y'all. So how many fights we got tonight, SB? Ooh, she said five or four. Oh, man. What, what we at? We on ESPN with it? Or the zone? No, no, I'm asking you. Everybody in the chat, smash the like button. Talk to him, champ. Everybody. Thurman still got his legs. Don't forget that guy's still a dog. Ooh. He said, Thur yeah, Thurman got his legs, but I don't know if he got his arms. I don't know if he got his hands. You can, you can have them legs. You better have, you better have, them, <laughs> you better have them hands. Because that's what's going to count for you. Them hands. 
Yeah, you better have them hands. Yeah. I'm pulling for him, though. I'm pulling for him. But, yeah, so what do y'all think about your boy, Jake Paul? You know, pulling out the fight with a few, with a few days left. He was just like, I'm not fighting him. He's too big. And the bridge of weight, you know, if you're walking around at 200 pounds, come on, man, what's 206? What's 209? When you a heavyweight, you a heavyweight. Cruiser weights, I don't care what you're talking about. A heavyweights. Heavyweights and cruiser weights are the same, bro. You know, they're the same. I know just about every cruiserweight that can fight moved up to heavyweight. Evander Holyfield, for that cruiserweight, moved up to where? Heavyweight. Michael Spinks, for that cruiserweight, moved up to where? Heavyweight. All the cruiserweights went from heavyweight, went from cruiserweight to heavyweight. So you mean to tell me Jake Paul scared to fight at heavyweight. And when I say heavyweight, I'm not even talking about past 120. I'm talking about a small heavyweight. I seen Robin Jr. ain't no big heavyweight. You know, and just think about it. If I seen Robin Jr. was the guy that you really wanted to fight, you would have never made a match between Tommy Fury and you. Jake Paul, but they thought they had some easy pickings. And that was smart on their behalf to not give Hasim Rodman Jr. a long training camp because with a long training camp, we would have really been screaming, stop it! We would have really been screaming that. So they gave him a short training camp. Now a month is still a long time to get ready for a fight. But then again, when you're already getting ready for a fight, you're already in top form, and you're telling somebody, you know, homo, to bend over backwards, it's not enough time. So I wish the fight would have took place because, to be honest with you, to keep it ace to ace and a spade to spade, I'd rather be covering Jake Paul versus Hussein Rodman Jr. tonight other than Ortiz. And don't get me wrong, Ortiz might be the future, but he's not the present. Now, even though he's a good fighter, he hasn't paid his dues yet. But guess what? Some work is better than no work. And listen, we're here. It's all that matter. Appreciate y'all again for tapping in. And when y'all tap, tap in, y'all got to hit the like button. Because y'all y'all be tripping sometimes, you know? Not on purpose, but um, we got 23 watching, and we only got seven likes. Now, if you tapping in, don't be the one to say, tell everybody else to hit the like button, and then you haven't even hit the like button. So make sure everybody that done tapped in hit the like button. Matter of fact, thumbs up if you hit the like button. So, yeah, it won't be long. How long? It won't be long. We got 14 minutes until it's showtime. Or should I say the zone? Real, real, 1-6, SB90. What's good? Just sub, champ. Okay, appreciate it, brother. Appreciate it. And hit the notifications. Hit the note eye, too. Hit the note eye for me, too. Sonny, hey, see? Seen, unseen boxing said, Psh. He hit the like button. See, there's a thumbs up. We got one of them. We hey, see somebody verified it. That's verification. We on Twitter. We verified. Let's go, champ. One time. Them two belts right there, boy. Hey, somebody asked me today. I did a, a podcast today um, on Drew Sports. Yeah, and um, he said, man, what about that red belt? He said, what is your favorite belt? I told him the green belt might look the best, 
But my favorite belt is that red boy. You hear me? That red boy. Now I ain't got red hair. But I got a red hat matching my red belt. Matching my red shirt. Let's go, champ. And we all blood. That's right. Which is red, too. So, yeah, man, um, I don't know what's taking Errol Spence and um, Terrence Crawford so long to make the fight. I mean, what is really going on, you know? I'm telling you, man, these fighters done got spoiled. I'm telling you the truth. Because they fighting when they want to fight. Once a year. You can fight once a year. You can go to work once a year when you're making in one day $80 million. Let me rewind that. When you're making $80 million one night, shoot, you ain't got to go to work forever. Just think about it. Tyson Fury said he might not never go back to work again because he made $80 million. Let me rewind that. Tyson Fury made $80 million. So he might not never come back to boxing. Never. But some people say, never say never. Because if Anthony Joshua beats Usyk, guess who coming back? Tyson Fury. Stop it! Deontay Wilder is coming back. And I'm happy. Because um, Wilder was with that bomb squad for real. And when Wilder throw punches... He throw bombs. Yes, he throw bombs. And he good for boxing. The hardest hitter in the game is Deontay Wilder. And up next is a small man. I bet y'all can't tell me who's up next hitting the hardest in second place in the sport of boxing. Talk to me. Who in second place as the hardest hitter? In a sport of boxing. Talk to me. Bet y'all ain't got it right. Talk to me, y'all. Who y'all got as the hardest hitter in second place? Come on, somebody talk to me. I know SB know exactly who I'm talking about. There you go. See, they already know it. See? Sari Latif Tank. There you go. Oh, seen unseen boxing. They already know. Tank. They call that boy a tank. Why? Because he's the second hardest hitter in the sport of boxing. Now, do y'all got him as the first hardest hitter in boxing? In your way, we, we gonna put him in. A, we put in your way in the top five. I put him in. I, in your way, we, he's a top. He's a top fighter, pound for pound. Number one, pound for pound, best fighter in the world. In your way. You know he can hit though. What's up though, Latif, my guy? Appreciate you for tapping in. Oh, in your way, listen. He got to be, hey, number one. Joshua, Joshua ain't no, Joshua not even top five. He, he, oh, and Toro, come on with somebody. You got to really know that. He said Joshua is in the top five. He, no, he said Joshua is number one. Hardest hitter in boxing. Stop it. No. No, Joshua is not number one. Yo, Toro, you think Joshua can? Joshua can't hit. I don't think Joshua can hit harder than Tyson Fury. Joshua is not hitting harder than any way. Joshua is not hitting harder than Javante Tank Davis. Shoot, Joshua is not hitting harder than um, Roly. Roly is hitting harder than Joshua. Um, man, I could go on and go on and go on and go on and go on. Oh, Bird Beef. That boy can hit hard. Now, Joshua is definitely not hitting harder than Bird Beef. Yeah, he up there. He is hitting hard. Joshua is not even hitting harder than Canelo Everest. Pound for pound. Pound for pound. I don't think Joshua is hitting harder than Triple G. You know, Joshua is a good dude, though. I like Joshua. I, I, I hope that his trainer, Garcia, can actually bring 
the toughness out of him because he needs to be tough. You need to take him. You need to bring him to Detroit. Take him to the Crunk Gym, the original Crunk Gym, the original Crunk Gym. Yeah, so, and then we can see what it is. So, yeah, we won't be long, y'all. Be patient. It is about to go down. Triple G is a great puncher. That boy can punch. I ain't gonna lie to you. Yeah, he punching. Shoot, Jamel Charlo. Pound for pound was a harder puncher than uh, Anthony Joshua. He be putting boys to sleep. Putting these boys in timeout. Jamel Charlo. Shoot, Sebastian Fedora. That boy, pound for pound, is a harder puncher than Anthony Joshua. I'm just keeping it 100. Greetings from Australia. What's up, Craig Burns? What's happening with you? Yeah, yep. Yeah. Andy Lee, no one, Matt. He got he to gotta highlight, this, highlight this boy K now. Yeah. Yep, so who is the best defensive fighter today? Baby Love, what up, though? K9 capping AG or AJ? Nah. Hey, I'll tell you this one, one thing I can tell you. We all got our own opinions, though. If you feel like it's AJ, hey, don't let me change your mind. Stick with AJ. You feel like he's the hardest hitter? Pound for pound or in the top five in your eyes? It's all good. But in my eyes, yeah, my eyes can see good. I saw where they were built set, and I went out there and made it happen. So I'm definitely going to say for sure I want the hardest hitters. I really couldn't say um, Shakur, Stevenson, or Devin Haney in their last fight. Neither one of them knocked out their opponent. Oh, so now we're talking about defense. Oh, yeah, defense. Yes. Now, now you're talking now, Devin Haney. It's up there. He's real quick. Real quick. Shakur Stevenson. Southpaw. Pretty good. Best defensive fighter. Um, shoot. Terrence Crawford. Terrence Crawford. Crafty. Great defense. Shoot. Javante Davis. He got that equalizer. So, you know, a good offense is a great defense. Yeah. The worst defense. Who's the worst defensive fighter? That's it. A top fighter. Top 10 fighter. Worst defensive fighter. I know off the rip. The worst defensive fighter in the top 10. Worst defensive fighter. Crawford is very crafty and very patient. Who is the worst Defensive fighter. Yeah. Pernell is P E R. Not saying I got a um, degree or anything, but the worst defensive fighter. The best offensive fighter could have been James Tony, too. Great. Very great. Oh, Ch Colin said the worst defense, Benavidez. Benavidez. I would have to say Anthony Joshua. How you go out there and get hit by somebody that weighs over 300 pounds? Remember when he lost his title to Andy Ruiz Jr.? Wow. He got knocked out by Butterbean. Butterbean cousin at the time. Andy Ruiz Jr. Remember that? So I would have to say AJ. Spider Moose say Birdie has the worst defense of any champ. He's like a caveman. And he dropped him three to four times. 
Exactly, Cruz. Well, Wilder, Wilder had an equalizer. So, uh, Wilder defense was bad against Tyson Fury, but not against nobody else because he, they were scared to hit him. They were scared to, they were scared to try to do anything. So, no, Wilder defense was bad against Fury. Against anybody else, it was great because he knocked all of them out. So, I wouldn't say Wilder. You know, you might anybody can have bad defense against a certain fighter, especially if he loses to that fighter. You got to remember, he fought that fighter twice, lost to that fighter twice. You know, the same way. So, no, we're not going to say Wilder. You know, I, I, I might have to say um, Triple G. Triple G might be the worst defensive fighter. You know, he hired Jonathan Banks, good friend of mine, to help him with his defense, to teach him how to, you know, be slick. So he might be, you know. But the thing about Triple G is he got a chin on him. That boy can take a punch. That boy can take a punch. Who has the worst chin in boxing? The worst chin in boxing. Who is Chinny? Who is Chinny Chin Chin? Huh? And don't forget now, Terrence Carver got dropped by a little guy. And Gamboa. Remember Gamboa dropped? Terrence Crawford at Junior Welterweight. Who has the chinny chin chin? Oh, yeah, we talking about now. Nah, we already know Amir Khan. <laughs> Amir Khan has the worst chin in boxing. We talking about who has the worst chin in boxing that's boxing now, currently. Then again, Amir Khan, has, has, he, has he retired yet? Oh, man. You know, uh, James Kirkland got a bad chin, too. Yeah, so the worst chin in boxing right now. Who's chinny? AJ. AJ, man. AJ in top five and everything, huh? <laughs> AJ in top five. He is in the top five and everything, y'all. Now y'all catching up now. That's what I'm talking about. We got 30 likes. Appreciate y'all. Hit that like button. Joshua Chin isn't great, you know? Now, if Tyson Fury was the fight against Anthony Joshua. If Anthony Joshua was to come back, beat Usyk, and, and fight Tyson Fury, who y'all think would win? Who y'all got winning? I give Anthony Joshua a good shot at beating Tyson Fury because Styles make fights. I think Deontay Wilder knocks out Anthony Joshua, but I think Anthony Joshua has a, a good chance at beating Tyson Fury. Even though I think Tyson Fury beats Anthony Joshua or beats Deontay Wilder, Styles may fight. But you got to remember, Spider Moose, Tyson Fury got hit by the hardest puncher in boxing, Deontay Wilder. So... I really can't say he don't got no good chin because guys that Deontay Wilder knocked down, they normally don't get back up. So, hey, I'm going to say Fury got a great chin because to get hit by Deontay Wilder and get back up and win a fight, <laughs> that shows a lot. That tells me a lot about your chin and your heart. Oh, boy. This the breaks. Hey, that's on you. Said you bet. 4,500 on Triple G. Hey, I'm not saying you're going to lose, but if you got money to blow, do you. Because I think, not trying to make you upset or mad at K9 and push your thumbs down, but, man, I think, I think Canelo going to give him that work. But I'm pulling for Triple G. There you go. So we don't know Steve G if Fury is good. We don't know. Yeah, we already know. Another cruiserweight, that's what I say. Cruiserweights have moved up to heavyweight. You know, all, all the good cruiserweights that can really fight for the money, they moved up to heavyweight. Steve Cunningham, another example, who fought Tyson Fury. And I believe was the first person to knock him down. 
I can't agree with you on that one. Canelo always have the ref, the ref's help, and definitely the judges' help. He definitely had the judges' help. Oh man, the, the judges, they love Canelo. Oh my goodness. They 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 um tripping forty five hundred you could. That's what I'm trying to tell you, boy. I'm betting on nobody. Listen, I'm not about to do it. I'ma keep my money in my pocket. You hear me? That's what I'm gonna do. Save the drama for your mama. You know, because if you don't win and you actually put money down. I wouldn't care if I put down a hundred dollars. I'm not trying to lose, period. You know, we gonna bet, we gonna bet for push-ups. You know, because I ain't gonna be mad about doing push-ups. At the end, I still win. Even if I lose, if we betting for push-ups. Uh I think Triple G won the first fight against Canelo Alvarez. The second fight, I got Canelo Alvarez winning. Yeah, I think Triple G won the first fight. Not the second fight, because the second fight, Canelo beat Triple G in a big drama show. He beat him at his own fight. He beat him at his own fight style. So there you have it. Hit the like button, Rodriguez. Yeah, this fight, zone to zone. Oh, George Covello. Did George Covello? Yeah, did George Covello um, start? Did they do that Rocky movie off after George Covello? That might be the guy you're talking about. This the breaks. Yep, the first fight. I think Triple G won the first fight. Not the second fight. Yeah, shoot. I think the best fight, I mean, I think the best chin, the best chin in boxing history, I'm giving it to Evander Holyfield. Because Evander Holyfield got hit by some real hard hitters, some heavy hitters. Yeah, he got hit by, he got hit by, Mike Tyson, and didn't go nowhere. Evander Holyfield has the best chin in boxing. Yeah. If, Riddick Bowe. So... The best chin in boxing history, in my opinion, is a Brandon Holyfield. Yes, sir. Hagler has a great chin, too. You know, um, James Tony has a great chin. Um, I think he got a great chin because he don't ever get hit flesh on the chin. And so it's hard to say he got a great chin because he don't be getting hit flesh. You know, it, it, it's never a clean shot. You can't land a, a clean shot on um, James Tony. Um, I don't know if I can say Floyd Chin is on the radio. You remember, Floyd got that that good defense. Floyd, you know, you got to think, he got hit by a few fighters that hurt him bad. Look when he got hit by um, Shane Mosley. He took it and shook it, though. See, him being in great shape and having the will to win helped his chin, his heart. He had a bigger heart than, than, than great chin. 
No, I would, I, I would not put Roy Jones up there with no great chin. Spider Moose, stop it. No. It's over. No, nah, you should have kept Ray Jones out of it. Ray Jones wasn't getting hit at all. You know, it's hard to say what kind of chin Ray Jones had because Ray Jones wasn't getting hit with nothing. You feel me? No, 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 no. Thank you. This is the breaks. Floyd don't get hit, so how, so how can we say he got a good chin? Glenn Johnson got a good chin, too, though. You're right. You already know what it is. Yeah, so. Appreciate y'all for tapping in. I don't know, but when when, when Ray, how Ray Jones got knocked out, bro, we, we it's just hard to bring his chin up. He got knocked out back to back, you know what I mean? He started getting knocked out like, like every other day. And I like Roy Jones. So, you know, but when you get knocked out, man, everybody forget about your, your chin. They don't be getting, you know what I mean? Mike Tyson had a great chin, but ever since he get, when he got knocked out, it was over with. Nobody saw some Mike Tyson got a good chin. They be like, man, you see what Holyfield did to him? You see what Buster Douglas did to him? So, you know, once you get knocked out, you know what I mean, they forget about the chin. What up, Elvin? It's away. You just got to pay for what you want. You know, you gotta do like us, man. I had to, you know, pay for the um the zone. That's all you gotta do. Let's not always ask for the link. You got the link to the fight, link to the fight. It's go in your pockets. You know, people be paying for everything. They paying and you wanna have a good time, you go out, you go buy good food. I see cats all the time. We eat lobsters, they eat lobsters. They got crystal bottles. They got the Kush Kush, you know. But then for a boxing match, send me a link. Then you riding good. You see what I mean, right? We on lodge with it. We outside with it. But then when they come to boxing, any links? Stop it. Come on, y'all. We all we get. We all we get, my dog. Yeah. Yeah, you know, this ain't this ain't that kind of YouTube channel. We on here, we don't be on here. You know what I mean? Begging for nothing. We you know, we we support each other. And you know, we we want everybody to grow. We don't want anybody to make money. We want everybody to do it the right way. So. Looks can be deceiving, Spider Moose. Looks can be deceiving. Yes, sir. That's right, y'all. Get them likes up. We, we at 45 likes now? Y'all showing out. That's what I'm talking about. We in the building, huh? Oh, no. Nah. Appreciate y'all all day long. We all we got. So, I don't know if we got four fights today, three fights today, however many fights we got. We ready. Are you ready like Freddy? What's up, Gino? Gino, what's up, boy? What's happening, Captain? Supposed to be going to Crunks tomorrow. 
Title Boxing going to be over at Crunks tomorrow, so they want me to make an appearance. So, you know, look forward to going to go tap in, see what they're talking about over at Crunks, show some love. Um, Be at Gold's Gym tomorrow, try to see if I can actually increase the time so we can get over there a little earlier and do the live sparring a little bit earlier than normal. So, yeah. There's a lot going on. Today, man, I had a good day today. Everybody tapped in and showed out today over at the gym. Yeah, we had a full house over at Jab's Gym. Shout out to Jab's Gym. Shout out to Willie Fortune. The cuz though. Little Big Cuz. Shout out to Lil K9. Wherever he at. Lil K9 here? S. Okay. Cool. Oh, yeah. This the breaks. Listen. This the breaks. Jake Paul knew that he was going to get the breaks. Beat off of him. So he was gone. Like a turkey to the cone. So you already know. He's a runner. He's a track star. Yeah. There you have it. A higher ceiling between Ortiz and Boots, too. I think Boots. They pushing Boots. Way more than they pushing uh, Ortiz. So, yeah. Oh, my man, whoever this is, he just blew a kiss to the, to the, to the crowd, to the people at home. Whenever you see a guy do like this, you know they know they about to get hit in the jaw. So they trying to tighten their jaws up right before they get hit so they can, like that's going to make them be able to take the, the, the punch better. So whenever you see them, they trying to get their jaws ready. When, when you get hit, loosen them jaws up so... You could take a shot better. So, you know, just giving y'all the heads up. The breakdown. Uh, Nikki said, hi, SB. Uh, Miss Niner, SB said, hi. Oh, well, you say I, I, I was good enough to say what I said. Yeah, I always hear you, but whoever you're talking to, I can barely hear them. Oh, yes, I don't want you to hear them. <laughs> That's why. I'm only one trying to hear them. Elvin said, never knew that about the jaw. Yeah, when you see them doing this, yeah, they're trying to prepare. You know what I'm saying? They jaw. And just think about it. If your jaw a little loose, or, or if you don't, if you go like this, and you mess around and get hit in the jaw, your jaw, you better take the shot a little bit better as far as if you get hit and your jaw ain't loose, yeah, that mug can crack right away. So you kind of like want to stretch everything. I think guys stretch. They stretch because they don't want to pull a muscle. So they stretch. So basically doing that, so it's a jaw stretch. Stretching your jaw. Oh, man, it's over already. This guy's a bum. First round. Stop it. It's over. It's over. Oh, man. This guy went out there throwing kisses. Now he's kissing the fist of the next man. Beck. His name is Beck. Beck of Southpaw. Beck is on him like a K-9 T-shirt. And listen, my man. Oh, the guy who was overhand left. His name is Slodan. Slodan. He's getting slaughtered. The Slodan is getting slaughtered. And he won't go past one round. Fresh meat. Oh, fresh meat. Fresh meat. Fresh meat. Look, every time you're about to go to the body, um, Sidon is going like this. Oh, please don't hit me. Stop. Don't go down there. Oh, I haven't been doing my sit-ups. Oh, I haven't been hitting my... Uh, I haven't been doing my... Oh, look, listen. He's a runner. He's a track star. Look at him, y'all. He's running. Oh, how long? Not long. Oh, it's about to be over. Oh, another body shot. Another body shot. Uh-oh. <coughs> Excuse me, y'all. 
The referee wanted him from, but pushing now. Okay, what about this? Warm, warm me for this. He look, he pawn, he's pawn. He's trying to throw the perfect punch. He's pawn. He's trying to get his opponent to jump in. That's why he's sliding back, sliding back, trying to catch him with a check hook or something. But his opponent ain't falling for it. So just go and throw punches. Throw the right hook. See, this man is letting his opponent off the hook. It's like whenever you punch, you're going to hurt him. Just throw punches. He's just sitting there waiting for the perfect punch. He's bouncing, bouncing. This is not basketball season. Basketball season over with in the NBA. So why is you steady bouncing? Stop bouncing. Oh, good left hand. But back. Back with the good left hand. Oh, back with the good right hand to the body. And his opponent said he, he's, hitting ref, he's hitting low ref. And the ref didn't fall for it. It's 30 seconds left in the round. If Beck don't finish him, I'm going to be highly upset at him because his opponent clearly is not in shape. Oh, good body shot from Beck. Beck is getting his respect. How long? Not long. 15 seconds and it'd be over. Uh-oh. Now, if his opponent, Badan, can get through the first round, he has achieved a lot. To get knocked down that early in the round and survive, Wow. Good stuff. And he's kind of looking like, I'm trying to think of the guy that actually knocked down um, Jermaine Taylor. What's the big strong guy? Get the parts fast and the job done faster. I'm talking about what's the guy named that knocked down Jermaine Taylor? I'm trying to think of his name. Um, Kelly Pavlik. There you go. This man that... You know, that just got knocked down looking like Kelly Pavlik. I can't see on oh, the replay. Oh. I missed the replay. I think it was a left uppercut to the body. Boom. Oh, we put, oh. Yeast. That hurted me. Oh, liver shot. Left uppercut. Oh, perfect liver shot. Oh, man. The man doodle -doo bricks. The man. Listen. Oh, man. Why didn't he go down there again, though? Beck, what is you doing? Now you look y'all see my man looking like Kelly Pavic. Y'all see him? Now see if Yanyanin can at least get a little bit of offense in. Yeah, Yan has the a breaks. strong right hand. If he can start unleashing that right hand, he can get some respect from Malakuzia. You mentioned the patience. Oh man. I need to hear a little bit of it though. I don't hear nothing that's be last month. Garcia knows that fighters that go up against him now are gonna be looking for a second shot that Luke Campbell landed to not to That's not a second. Oh, good straight left hand from Beck. Jab from the back. Sliding back. He got a, he got a good in and out game, boy. He's a good little jab from Beck. Another left hand from Beck. Oh man. And if ain't Kelly Pavlik telling his opponent to come on, and I don't know who put this boy in here with that man. Who did that to him? Fresh meat. Fresh meat. Oh, we got some fresh meat today. Oh, left uppercut. And Kelly Pavlik. Look alike. Shook his head like, no, that didn't hurt. Ooh, the left uppercut from Beck. Ooh, oh, right hook to the body. You knew it was coming. He winded up with the left uppercut, then came back with the right hook. Oh, look, 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 look at the fake Kelly Pavlik through the right hand. Got pushed off. Beck, trying to get that respect. Jab from Beck. Another jab from Beck. And then, boom, uppercut. Left uppercut. Another left uppercut from Beck. Oh, another left hand from Beck. Oh, and the right hook. And down goes the impersonator. He's hurt, y'all. Jan Jan. Oh, how long? Not long. Woo, my man. The bully. The bully Beck. He's bullying his opponent. He's bouncing like a fake Tyson Fury. You know, Tyson Fury got a good bounce game. Like the NBA, look. I just want, I just don't understand why the impersonator keep on saying he's straight. Like, he had to look at his opponent like, come on. Come on. More money, more money. Now he's trying to give his opponent a handshake. Like, I'm not giving you no handshake. I'm killing you. I'm destroying you. Another body shot from Beck. Beck just having his way. I mean, he just do whatever he want to do. Hook, uppercut. 
Jan, Jan, Jan Janine. Oh, another body shot. And them body shots is breaking him down. He might be pissing blood later on. He's getting hit with good body shots. Look at Beck. Beck walking him down. Beck's the southpaw, y'all. He's in the ring. Orthodox fighter. And look, see? Them, oh, he survived again. What is wrong with you, Beck? You supposed to end this. He's clearly winning. Every round. Two rounds in the book. Oh, he's hurt. He's hurt bad. Yeah, he's hurt, hurt. Oh, Rusty. What's up, Rusty? Cornelius. K9 Bundridge. Arr, 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 arr. Let's go, champ. Okay, that makes sense. Yan Yanin, that's his name. Yan Yanin, ooh. They showing the replay. Yan Yanin got hit with the left hook. Man, Yan Yanin getting pieced up. Oh, man, look at him. Beck just doing what he want to do to him. Down goes Yan Yanin. Oh, the last name is Yan Yanin. And Yan Yana is on the on ropes because he has no legs. I think what he needs to do is he needs to go for the kill. Go out swinging. Uh oh, Yan Yana fainting. Oh, Beck is killing him. Yayana just shook his head again, which means that he hurt it. He trying to act like it didn't hurt, but it did. Ooh, look at the right hook. He missed, though. Beck with the body shot. Another body shot. Them body shots is killing Yayana. Oh, then a straight left hook to the head. Uh, Yayana getting punched. Oh, another body shot, and it's over. And he's crawling on the floor. Oh, oh, he's going to say the canvas. Oh, man. Where's his team at? Throw the towel in. You see the man get a tire full of waste. You know it's over. Come on, ref. You're going to let this man keep suffering. Look at look at Beck. Beck just looking like Bolo in there. Look at him. He's strong as I don't know what. He's just throwing haymakers. A left uppercut from Beck. The southpaw is doing whatever he want to do. Oh, Oscar De La Hoya looking like, oh, man. Oh, he looking at him like, oh, man, I wish I could get him in there with Canelo Everest. You should have put Canelo in there with me. That's what you get. Uh-oh, look. Ayanyana said, I'm straight. Oh, but the ref's seeing something different. I'm seeing something different. He up against the ropes. Ayanyana's getting pieced up by Beck. And he goes to the other side of the ring. Oh, he's on the ropes getting hit again. He's getting the brake speed off of him. Uh, where is this corner at? Terrible corner. Oh, where is a Mark Breeland at when you need him? Oh, Mark Breeland should be there to throw the towel in for this one. And then he turns around, the referee stops the fight and say, hey, hey, I was I was getting hit. That's the thing, you idiot. You was getting hit. It's over. Stop it. It's over. Wow, the bully beats up his opponent. Yanyana looking like a Beat fighter. He's beat. Bad. Looking like a fake Kelly Pavlik. It's over. Stop it. Now, Beck ain't really showed me nothing. You know, anybody can go out there and beat up a bum. You know, clearly, you know, the bully was a bully. And Slide On, Yan Yana, clearly was a bum. Or, he might have took a, the fight on a short notice like I seen Robin Jr. was about to do. Just think it would have been different results. It's over. It's over. Wow. 
Yeah, the sparring sessions are very funny, ain't they? Rusty. We yeah. have to throw the glasses on another time. It's bright light. Y'all remember Gizmo? Bright light. Bright light now. We appreciate you all. That's right. That's right, Nikki. We appreciate everybody for tapping in. Hashtag dogs of us. Definitely appreciate appreciate everybody from tapping in. Good fight. Back bully. The back bully with a, I believe that was a third round knockout, SB. El Turo, tell him again. Check out K9's merch. You wanna you wanna get some of this K9 gear? Melakuziev. With the win. He's 10 and 1 with eight knockouts. Yeah, if y'all trying to get that good merch, that stop it merch, all you gotta do is DM me on Instagram at K9 Boxing. The website is www.k9boxingfitness.com. Oh yeah, this was over with quick. How long? Not long. It's over. It's over. Yeah, he got good footwork. That's one thing I can't say. Like, he been training over here in America. You know, we gonna teach you footwork for sure. If you ain't got nothing else, you gonna have that footwork. Let me see your footwork. Let me see your foot. You know, we used to jit back in the day. Remember the jit was a style? Or uh, cats was jitting. So ever since then, we done had good footwork. Let me see your footwork. Let me see your foot. Work. Caston had it since day one. Appreciate y'all for tapping in. The watch party with the champ. Er, er, er. Cornelius K9 Bungers. Let's go, champ. Hashtag dogs us. Ooh, they showing a replay. Always oh, getting a breaks beat off of him. The referee could have been stopped the fight. And this idiot got mad. Like, bro, the referee saved your life. You should be thanking him instead of looking at your crowd and your team saying, but. I was just getting beat up. That's it. That's the point. You were getting beat up. And you wasn't doing anything. Man, it's over. It's over. Oh, we got three to go, y'all. Oh, I can't wait to see this one. We got Blair Blair Cops, who actually is going viral on this YouTube channel right here. Yeah, so, yeah, your boy Blair Clive is going viral. Uh, when Trash Talk goes, what is it called, SB? When Trash Talk goes bad. Oh, yeah, oh, it's all good. Man, what a day, boy. The summer is quickly leaving. Don't seem like it's quickly leaving because when it's hot, it's hot. And when it's not, it's not. Yeah, so today, today, hey, look, that humidity was like 100, wasn't it, SB? Huh? Yeah, it was, it was definitely hot, though. Oh yeah, we. I think we gotta. I can't wait to see this right here one though, cause um man, they are actually like SB was saying, they throwing them in there, ain't they SB? They throwing um Blake um Blair Club. They putting that boy in here. Yeah, trying to figure out. So when um Triple G and Canelo Alvarez fighting, it's got to be the one they promoting. Yep, there we go. Oh, yeah, that's going to be a big one. Triple G versus Canelo Alvarez. That first fight, for sure. Triple G won. They call it a draw. The second fight, Canelo won. 
The, fir- the third fight, somebody said they got 4,500 on Triple G. Stop it! Man, I don't know about that one. Listen. Thanks to everybody that done tapped in. Man, I'm not betting on nothing. Yeah, when y'all tap in, y'all hit the like button. <laughs> they see you coming, champ. Let's go. Let's go. Hooker versus Cobb. Oh, I can't wait to see this one. I'm excited. They showing uh, Maurice Hooker in a dressing room. I see Oscar De La Hoya and Bernard Hopkins. Bernard Hopkins is a smart man. Cause um, uh oh, yeah, Bernard Hopkins. Um, he hung in there with um. Oh yeah, he hung in there with um Oscar De La Hoya. Why Sugar Shane Rosie ended up somehow leaving or you know vacating? Oh man. I got you. So I'm trying to figure out what did they just say? Hooker just dedicated his fight to someone. Oh, the photographer. Okay. He he dedicated his fight to the photographer that passed away. He said, oh, Blair Cobb. Oh, man. Go check out the Blair Cobb video. When trash talk going bad. <laughs> oh, no, it's over. Oh, uh, he, man, listen. Get them hands. Hey, right, listen. We don't want them nowhere. Here we go, y'all. Let's get ready to rumble. Fresh meat. Oh, what is you doing? Lord, slow down. What is you doing? A fly go mess around and, and give us all in trouble. That mug was all on the screen. <laughs> it had knocked the belt down. Uh oh, please. Uh oh. They're a cop. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can leave him alone now, SB, because he hurt. Hey, you got to leave him alone on here. I don't care. You got to leave him alone because that boy, is, he hurt. He done hit him with that spray. He is. Why you think he's doing that? He is hurt. You can leave him alone. He done now. Yeah, he is done, champ. Trust me. Look at him. He. he yeah, exactly. I hope you know that, champ. No, we good. Hey, Blair Cobb, she said, this should be a good fight. Natty for life. Man, listen, if Danny, if Blair Cobb can can fight as good as he talk, you know, he talk a good talk. Oh, yeah. I'm telling you. He going to be all right. 100%. What did he say? 100%. He said 100%. A double S whooping time. Ass ain't a bad word. He said, 100% ass whooping time. This guy right here, boy, uh, he done jumped on the ring. Oh, man, we about to go viral again. I, SB, I told you, just let it let it go because that's the mail that's irritating me, champ. Oh, man, listen. This is gonna be funny in the mud. When when Blair Cobb gets stopped, because this man be, listen, you talking about showboating? Oh my goodness, he's showboat like never before. This man, he has on a jacket that says, ass whooping time. He jumped up on her on, you know, on a, a ring, the ring ropes, the top of the ring ropes. Like he about to do something, man. Listen, he's in there with a real fighter, a former world champion. 
I told you. Yeah, he's done. Yeah, it's over. I knew it. He was he he's done. Uh oh. And you gotta remember that Hooker is doing this for his um his photographer. Like he's in a zone. He's just relaxed. He ain't showboat. He's just in a good mood. Ain't nothing wrong with that, you know? So yeah, it's about to go down. He sure got the fans rooting for him. Or well, maybe he coming on a rap song that everybody know. <laughs> but um man. I got Maurice Hooker in here. Right. Only person he lost to that I can remember that really can fight. Is um I see Terrence Crawford there. I understand that young girl, young lady. I'm talking about for us. He there, but just to let you know that, you know, that fight can ain't gonna ever sell like like a Manny Pacquiao Floyd Floyd fight. Cause he there and you know, he looking around, coming to the ring. Like they're going to be like, oh, Flo uh, ah, Terrence Crawford. And the people even, they probably don't even know who he is. Because they probably ain't real boxing fans. They just hear, they they heard it was a boxing event. And they just at the boxing event not knowing that that's Terrence Crawford. That's in the ring with them. And of course they boys because, you, you know, they got the same trainer too. So they definitely going to be boys. So yeah, it's going down, y'all. Yeah, Steve Z, we're gonna see what he does after the Racha fight fight. You ain't lying, champ. Huh? Oh yeah, both of them come hey, both of them coming off losses. Yeah, but I don't think, you know, my man's lost. Cobb, his loss, I don't think, Cobb, Cobb's loss, I think, is worse. And you would think a loss is a loss? But no, not when it's like they, not when it's like the loss that he, he done suffered. Oh, man. Oh, he a good referee, too. Lawrence Gold is a good referee. And maybe he learned. Uh oh, Blair Cobb, y'all. Uh oh, we gonna see if he learned his lesson. Man, I can't wait. Yeah, I can't wait to see this one. The good thing about this, though, SB, is that after that fight, this fight was ready to come on right away. The zone will be playing. They bringing that work in right away. Oh, man. Stacy Snyder said his mentor is Stacy Snyder. Dang. Look like to me, I see like a little little um little baggage, a little baggage around the waist of Hooker. You know, so did Hooker take this fight serious? Cause he got a little baggage around the waist, the, you know, the waist session. See that? He couldn't? Oh, see, he couldn't make the weight. See, I knew it. Someone wasn't right. Blair Flair, look, he he listen, he got the fighter's mentality. He just, you know, he, he talk a little bit too much. That's all. If you gonna talk that talk, you gotta walk that walk. You know, me, I tell you in a minute, don't bark if you can't bite. You gotta back it up. Don't just talk about it. You gotta be about it. He don't want to buy. Oh, yeah, he sure don't. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because last time he got knocked out, that's a good point. He want people to forget that fight. He came in with braids. Last time he had long hair. Oh, my goodness. He just, yeah, he, he looks slow. He just looks like he made for TV, made to make somebody's YouTube channel look good. I ain't lying, because he looking slow. He looking like as soon as he get hit, he going to be out of there. I'll talk about Blair Cobb look like soon as, listen, soon as on Hooker, hook him with a hook, it's over. Soon as, oh, good little left hand, though. Good little left hand from the southpaw. Cobbs, y'all. Corn on the cop. We gonna say corn on the cop. You know, corn is, is great because you know my first name starts saying it's corn. So corn on the cop is good so far. Cobbs ain't looking bad. We haven't seen Hooker do anything yet. Hook hasn't threw a hook yet. You know, but he's clearly the bigger dude. I mean, he looked like he uh in a whole different weight class in there right now. Look at the jabs from Cobbs. Cobbs sticking that softball jab in there. On Hooker. Hooker looking slow. You know, I mean, you would think he would definitely be ready because he able to get the, the work with one of the best fighters in the world, which is Terrence Crawford, who actually fights Southpaw majority of his fights. And Blair Cobb is a Southpaw. Now, it is definitely different when you got on 16 ounce gloves versus wearing eight ounces or 10 ounces, whatever size gloves they got on right now. But um, yeah, so far I think we done saw the best of uh, cops, which ain't a whole lot. And we haven't seen the best uh, uh, hooker yet. Oh, and one thing hooker do has, it's a right hand. And saw pars are very susceptible to right hands. And Oscar is over there with his, his girlfriend, whoever she is, and looking like, oh, guess who just got hurt? Unbelievable. Hooker just got caught with a right hook. Oh, man, look. Oh, man, it looked like the man was out of shape. This man must have been partying, thinking he tans Crawford or something. Oh, man, Hooker just got caught with a hook, a right hook. Oh, and a good body shot. Uh-oh, then he landed the uppercut. He landed the uppercut on Cops. Cops, it ain't over till it's over. Maybe he done woke up a giant. Yeah, he showed better respect him. Yeah, it uh, actually turned out to a real fight. It's a slug, a slug fest. Now it's going down. Oh man, look at Cobb. Cobb finna make good on his predictions. Finally, oh, he threw a good left hand, bounced in the air like a basketball, like he Mike Jordan with the left hand right down the pipe. Wow, what's up, Jose? What's up, Joey? Wow. Yeah. Man, it's going down, y'all. Everybody get them likes up. We at 49. I know we got at least three, four hundred and already tapped in, so we should definitely be way up on the board. A replay. Boom. Right hook. From Cobbs, boom, left uppercut from Cobbs. Oh, and right hook, he didn't ever saw it. He ducked down and threw it. Jab, right hand to the body from um from um Ortiz. Boom. Then standing straight up, he got hit with an overhand left. Watch the boom. No, oh, overhand right. In a southpaw stance. Bang, look at Cobbs. Oh man. Cobbs got a chance to get back in the game. Listen, if he can stop a former world champ, Maurice Hooker. You talking about a bounce back out of this world? Man, that'd be a bounce back out of this world. Oh, he done dropped him again. Wow. It might be over with. For um, and he like he hurt too. Hooker look like he hurt. Hooker hanging out with Terrence Crawford, man. And um, not taking boxing serious or something ain't right. Cause like I say, his stomach don't look like he in shape at all. I mean, did he take the fight on short notice? Or did Terrence Crawford beat him up bad and, and you know, and sparring? Because you could be in there with a, with um with somebody and, and constantly getting hurt. Oh, look, he's throwing waymakers. Look, the referee might be forced to stop the fight. And Maurice Hooker was smart enough to grab his opponent because Blair Cobb is throwing 
a thousand hooks. Right hook, left hook, right hook, left hook. Man, and Landon, majority of them shots. Cobbs is looking good, y'all. I really thought he was just listening in there to make Maurice Hooker look good. And Maurice Hooker, he don't seem to, to have his legs. And he's just a flat-footed fighter. Like, he don't, he just out there just to throw shots. Like, he don't really, uh-oh. Uh, look, now, look, oh, oh, now he hitting Blair Cobb in the back of the head twice. Now the referee wanted him from holding. But at the same time, come on. Oh, that was a, that was a terrible um, warning by the referee. Man, Hooker took advantage of hitting Blair Cobb in the back of the head twice. I'm talking about hard back of the head shots. Them the kind of shots that, that, that put Jerry McCullough in a coma. And that is a bad look. And that might have made him bounce back, though. Look, them little back of the head shots, you know, got Blair Cobb, like, thinking about, you know, hey, man, this man I woke up. And, um, you know, Hooker, this is a good little fight, though. And I got, hey, we got um Blair Cobb up by two rounds. He done won both rounds on a 10-8. Knockdowns in both rounds for Blair Cobb. And... Hooker, it might take Hooker a little while to get this stuff going. Like, he might be one of those guys that's a slow starter. And um, Blair Cobb is moving around, trying to find a perfect identity for the perfect punch. He is waiting and waiting and just trying to size his opponent up, and hopefully he can catch uh, Hooker at the right time. He's moving around, waiting, slipping, sliding, and he's going to try to throw that left hand or right hook. Watch. He's sliding, sliding. Hooker walking him down, but he's looking for something back at the same time. So he's not falling for the trap. He's trying to be real smart and cautious on everything he do. Because he has, oh, good overhand left from Cobbs. But, oh, Hooker goes down again. Hooker is getting the brakes beat off him. He is not making, you know, um, Tans Crawford and them look good at all. Yep. He's getting the butt whooped out of him. That's the bell. He saved by the bell. Luckily for him. Wow. And, you know, hey, man, listen. Freddie Roach was good with Manny Pacquiao. And that's it. You know, um, Terrence Crawford then got up to talk to his boy. Like, look, bro. You know what I'm saying? You know, we on TV. You know what I mean? You know, I don't actually, you know, I don't sponsored you by being around you. And, you know, you can't make us look bad. So whatever you got to do, bro, do it. Hit him low if you got to hit him low. You know what I mean? But survive. Just, just hang in there because if you get hit with another good shot, it's over. Man, they showing a replay. Blair Cloud, boom, straight left hand right down the middle. Man, he threw that boy so straight. Listen, I'm talking about straight like a person, like a man with a woman. Straight. Oh, that's straight. That's straight. Yes. Adam with Eve is straight. Yes. Straight down the middle. Oh, man. Listen. We talking about an upset? Hey, somebody is a genius. And somebody is a fool. Now, whoever loses this fight, going to look like the fool. And whoever wins this fight, going to look like the genius. But I tell you, Hooker has one more time that he gets knocked down like he just got knocked down, and it's over. Either the towel won't come in, or the referee just going to stop it, or either he's not going to get up. So, look, look, Cobb is just bouncing around. Now, you better be careful because he won punch of getting stopped or knocked out because he already showed that he can't take a punch either. So, it's one punch, and it's over in round three. Now, I hope it don't be no accidental head bunts. Because normally when a southpaw fighter, an orthodox fighter, and you know, both guys looking on the opposite, side of the, opposite sides of each other, that once they both go in, boom, it's normally a head bunt. Now, both guys got braided hair, you know, one lighter, one brown. Both, got on, both guys got on black shoes, black gloves. Both guys are black. But somebody about to get knocked out. Maybe we might have a double knockdown or a double knockout. But they both swing for the fences. And, you know, one thing that Hooker lacks is defense. Finally, he's moving. He's finally moving in, moving out. And whatever um, Terrence Crawford told him so far in this round is working. He might have told him, look, man, you got to look for something back. You can't just walk the man down and not look for something back. The man is punching too. So good little jab from 
Maurice Sucker. But Cobbs is looking for one punch, and that's what he should not be doing right now. You know, maybe he should throw multiple punches like he did to set up the punch that he actually landed in the last two rounds. You know, and um, left hand to the body from Cobbs. Blair the flare. Oh, with the overhead left. And then he came back with the right hook. Hey, but listen, that pep talk, that hook it done got from Terrence Crawford, he done took it and shook it. Oh, looks like Blair the flare Cobbs, though, got a, a, sw a swollen right, um, swollen left cheek. Maybe from the overhand rights from Maurice Hooker. Maurice Hooker needs to come back with a hook. The overhand right, left hook, shorten up. But he has to move his head. See, when you tall, you can't stand straight up. Because what Blair the Flair Cobb is doing is he's timing him standing straight up in the air. He's slipping, slipping, and ducking and punching. He's ducking and throwing overhead, overhand lefts. He's, he's throwing straight left hands down the middle because he knows exactly where Maurice is going to be. And what Maurice is doing good this round is he's not where, where his opponent thinks he's going to be at. See, just now, he threw a punch and then slid back out the way. Now, Cobbs isn't landing the shots he was landing at first because Maurice is getting out the way now. Oh, but as soon as I said that, after the bell, bam, he got caught a right hook. Because what? He was right in one spot. There to be hit. Big O. What's up, champ? John P, a bark, a bite, an overhand right. Arr, arr, arr. Welcome to k Box. And you got the champ. That's right. The champ. The warrior champ. Blair and Flair looking good, y'all. 15 and 1 with 10 knockouts. He's in there with a more experienced fighter who has more knockouts than he has fights. But Hey, styles make fights. And Blair is fighting the perfect style. He's doing better than I even imagined he was going to do. But, hey, they say it ain't over till the fat lady sing. So, I don't hear no, oh, not yet. In round four. But one adjustment that um Maurice Hooker is making as he's keeping his hands up, he's doing a little bit more moving. I remember, rest in peace to Walter Smith. He said, a man stays still, a man get killed. And look, so look how he's moving out the way. Just that little slide back out the way, he sees evading punches. See, look, he's sliding back again. And he's throwing his own punches now. Good change, good um exchange from both fighters. But Bl Blair the Flares, look, he's just trying to Figure out what's going on, trying to assess the moment, trying to figure out the territory. You know, they say keep a man, keep your enemies close. I will keep my enemies at a distance. And right now, Maurice Hooker needs to keep his enemy at a distance. Because guess who just threw an overhand left and a right hook but missed? Because guess what? Maurice Hooker had a great distance, a good distance. And now, Blader, um, Blader Flair, the same punches he was landing early on, he's missing. Yeah, and um, look, Cobbs, you know, needs to start going to the body because he's missed another good right hook, a straight right hand landed from Maurice Hooker. And, you know, I think the experience is actually helping Maurice Hooker because he's been there and done that before. So he didn't get dropped and came back before, and he's showing you, I've been here, I've done that before. Now, Flair has never been there where a guy has – taking his best shots and was still there. See, he normally he knock a guy down, he knock a guy out. But he didn't knock this guy down, Maurice Hooker, and Maurice Hooker is there. Giving pep talk from Terrence Crawford, look at him. Whole different person now. Good jab from Maurice Hooker. Same pep talk Floyd be giving Javante Davis. Come on, man. Let's get it. Javante Davis goes out there and knocks his opponent out in the next round. And look at Blair Flair, throwing all kind of shots now, and he's starting to miss. You know why? He don't have the experience. Another reason is that Maurice Hooker is 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 judging this distance perfect. Oh, he just got caught another hook. Oh, he hurt bad now. I think Maurice Hooker is hurt bad, but hey, 
He's showing he got good grit. Like, one thing you can't give a man is heart. And one thing Maurice Hooker, Hooker has is heart. But he one punch away from getting knocked flat out. But he need to get some respect. I mean, only shots he lands is in the back of the head. Uh, when when um, Blair to Flair doesn't judge his distance correctly and he falls in. Other than that, man, Blair to Flair all day long. Man. And then at the end of the round, Maurice Hooker looks at Blair to Flair like, yeah, boy, you know, you gave me your best. I'm still here. How long? Maybe not for long. Stop it! Oh, man, yes. If, if, he, keep, if he keep getting caught, it's going to be over. <laughs> yeah, Gino, I agree with you. Sam, Sam, who's winning the fight? By a long shot. Blair the Flair. Not for long. I don't know. Arizona. I don't know. It looks that way, but if hey, if he can't knock out uh, Maurice Hooker in the next two rounds, it might be a long fight for him. Yeah, he got two rounds to do it. Two rounds to do it. If he don't knock him out in the next two rounds, he better have him punch drunk. Because if not, one thing that um, Maurice Hooker is going to continue to do, he going to swing from the home run. He's not a base hitter. He's a home run swinger. He going for the home run. So, good double jab hook from Blair to Flair. Good jab from, Blair, from, from uh, Maurice Hooker. Right hook from Blair to Flair. And I just don't know, to be honest with you, if Maurice Hooker can get back in the game. He done got knocked down too many times, and he done got hit too many times to really bounce back, you know, from all what he done went through. And that's like a person on drugs. You can't you can take only so many drugs before you can come back and be this, the same you again. I saw a young lady the other day. All them drugs, you know, as, as much as she want to be who she was 100 years ago, it's over. It's over. So, yeah, so Maurice Hooker, he needs to not get hit with nothing else. He's jabbing a little bit, trying to figure out where... Blair is at. Blair is moving his head real good. Blair got a good distance, and he's, he, and he's trying his best. Oh, and the referee continues to let Maurice Hooker hit this man in the back of the head. Now, what in the heck is wrong with him? Because I know if I ever see my son in there, I'm going to warn him ahead of time and say, man, listen, don't let my man hit him in the back of the head. Because what I'm noticing that he's allowing to happen is he's allowing um, – you know, the fighter to hit the other fighter in the back of the head without giving them hard, stiff warnings. Getting hit in the back of the head is a bad look. Blair the Flair is moving around. You know, he can't get the distance. He can't get the shot that he's trying to get. And he got the last, what, two, three rounds ago? So he's just moving around just trying to get hit because one thing that Maurice Hooker is trying to do is he's trying to end it with one punch. And one thing he can do is end it with one punch. He does have 18 knockouts. Out of 27 wins. But he just, he stays on, ooh, good right hand from Maurice Hooker. But Blair Fair, you know, eyes are open. Like a crackhead hitting the pipe. Eyes open. Making sure he don't get caught nothing stiff. And, oh, good overhand right from Maurice Hooker. But guess what? Blair Flair took it and shook it. Now Blair Flair has a, a knot. On his right eye. Nah. That only knot I want to have is in my pocket. But Blair Flair got a knot on his eye. Hopefully, you know, he can get back to his corner and they can stop the swelling. Because if, if it swells up and it gets worse and worse and worse and you can't see out the right eye, it can spell problems for him later on in the fight, especially with the right hand that Maurice Hooker possesses. Appreciate everybody for tapping in. We got the liveest YouTube channel for Boxing Talk. K9 Boxing. What's happening, y'all? Appreciate, appreciate y'all for tapping in. Y'all make sure y'all hit the like button. And, of course, if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button, too. 
and hit the notifications so you can be notified when we go live. Shout out to SB for the great work that she do. Shout out to everybody for be t for tapping in all the time. And I watch parties on 10. Ooh, it's showing a replay. And the right hook that um, Blader Flair just caught um, Marie Sucker with was as good as the other right hooks he caught him with. And the, and the left hand he caught him with. But Marie Sucker didn't go nowhere. And maybe they gave him some smelling sauce or something. Oh, maybe, hey, like I say, it was probably the pep talk that Terrence Crawford gave him. When you get the pound for pound best fighter in the world, you know, step into the, to the ring, I'm talking about on top of the ropes and tell you, hey, bro, come on, man, let's get this, you know? This could be your last opportunity. Let's make it happen. And you think they said anything to him? You're only supposed to have a few people in your corner? Oh, good right hook, left hook, right hook, left hook, right hook, left hook from Cobb. Oh, he's trying to end it. He is trying to end it. And Maurice Hooker smartly grabs him and says, come here, boy, let's talk about this. And, uh-oh, now, Blatter Flair's holding. And somebody is cut. Somebody cut. Somebody got head butted. I figured it would happen sooner or later. Oh, man. Blatter Flair's be leading. Uh-oh. Is it over? Uh-oh. How long? Not long. Dang, that's a deep cut. Yeah, that's a deep cut. Listen, Blatter Flair got a deep cut. But if it's a good thing about it, the blood is not going to go down in his eye. So with the cut being like right over here, on the side of his face, the blood is going to go down the side of his face and not in the eye. So, but he's looking like, listen, he's looking like he's been in a car crash. Because one eye swole, oh, uh, man, listen, one eye cut, and you would think if you just not tapping in and you saw both the guy's faces, you would think that he's the one losing. Well, he's the one winning. He's the only one that got the knockdown so far. He done knocked. Maurice Hooker down. Now, Maurice is feeling feeling real good about everything right now because he done saw blood. And like a shark, you see some blood, guess what? You're going for the kill. So Maurice Hooker is going for the kill. He is trying to knock Blair the Flair lights out. Now, if Blair the Flair can lo load up on a straight left hand and throw that mug right down the middle whew, and time it, but you're going to have to do some feints and do something different, try to set it up. Man, oh, he just tried it. He landed one left hand, but see, like I say, that blood done turned Maurice Hooker on. He like a piranha in there now, boy. He out there trying to get it. He is trying to get his opponent up out of there. And his trainer, which is the same trainer that Terrence Crawford has, and listen, they say, they telling him something. You know, and uh, like I say, if you just not tapping in, boy, you see – the fight right now, you're going to think that the man that's moving or the man that's running, he's a runner, he's a track star. You will think that he's the one losing. He actually winning. Blatter Flair done knocked Maurice Hooker down a couple of times. Now, right now he's playing it safe. He want to get back to his corner and get his face looked at. You know, you know, he's trying to get him to work on his face. Oh, overhand right from Maurice Hooker. And the thing about it, though, Blair, Blair Flair, he got a, a better defense, though. His defense on 10 today. I mean, listen, he done got caught with a few shots, but the cut didn't come from getting hit. The cut came from a head, but so Blair Flair is still looking good. Now he's holding his distance now, and he's throwing that straight left down the middle. He just missed it. And, and Maurice Hooker is still, you know, he owned him like a K-9 T-shirt, but he just can't. Land a perfect punch. Oh, good right hook from Blatter Flair. Dean looked his tongue out. Like, nah, take that, take that. And where's the referee at? The referee, like, he don't want to get in there. The, the, the bell about the ring. Why isn't you right there? Oh, man, he don't want to get hit himself, I guess. Oh, my goodness. Chase Bishop, what's up, my dog? Oh, Gino, you might be right. Like he said, Cobb is running out of gas. Kid, Leroy is definitely a good fight. It is a good fight. Jazz, what's up, Jazz? Jackson. JJ, what's up, champ? AJ, stop it! Don't stop it. No. 
I don't know what, what, hey, Gino, I don't know who he with. Chase, I don't know. Hey, like and subscribe. One thing I can tell you, though, he went in a fight. That's one thing I can tell you. He went in a fight. That's what I can tell you. And that's a bad cut. But like I say, the blood is not going to get in his eye. And then, at the end of, at, you know, at the, end of the day, too, oh, he's showing the right hook. No, that right hook was a slap. If, we, if he'd have turned that boy over, oh, then he put, licked his tongue out. If he would have got hit in the mouth while his tongue was out, he, his tongue would be split. He would be getting stitches not only on his face but on his tongue. And you got to be careful. You got to be more careful, champ. You got to be more careful. It's a good fight, though, y'all. And listen, my man Maurice Hooker is trying to come back, y'all. But, man, he's slow. He's like a mummy in there. Yes, the mummy returns. Oh, and listen, Blair the Flair, they got grease on the eyes, so hopefully they can keep the blood from some, um, actually pouring down his face. And um, Blair Fleck can get the confidence he had a few rounds ago, you know, because when he's bleeding now, the eye swelling, you know. Um, Hooker is getting thirstier, you know. And um, Blair the Flair is on a run. He's a runner. He's a track star, you know. But I wouldn't say he's a runner. He's a track star. He's really boxing. He ain't running. And like the video we saw with Jake Paul when he was running it, in the ring with Hasim Robin Jr. But Blair the Flair isn't trying to do anything. On the unofficial scorecards, Creed, Chris Mannix has it 59 52 for Cobb. Cobb, 10 8 round, the first round, 10 7 round, second round, 10 9, the third round, 10 9, the fourth round, 10 9, the fifth round. So yeah, he got, hey, listen, Blair the Flair is winning. So, you know, if he can win one more round at least. He can win a fight even if he go to distance. I think that, you know, um, Maurice Hooker going to need to win every round. I'm talking about he got to win these rounds, 10-8 rounds. Like, I don't know why. Like, he don't have his pedal to the metal. He don't have his, his feet on the gas tank. And he needs to. I mean, did anybody ever show him how to throw short punches, how to turn short punches over? It's like everything he throw is long. He's already a long guy. Like, he's really tall and long. He needs to learn how to turn him, up, turn him over. Short distance. And the blood is going down the cheek again of Blair the Flair. Blair the Flair is bleeding from a head bunt. And um, he's ducking and dodging. And Maurice Hooker is swinging and missing. He's, he's moving his head side to side. I mean, he's winning around because Blair the Flair isn't doing anything. Good little jab from uh, Maurice Hooker. But Maurice Hooker... It's not throwing straight shots, straight short shots. Like, everything is long. And if Blair Flair can time it, it's over. It's over. We got 23 seconds left, and I'm surprised. I would be surprised if we don't get another head bunt and a cut opening up for somebody else or another cut opening up for Blair Flair. With 13 seconds left, Blair Flair has his hands up. He's slipping, but he can't land that solid straight shot, that one hitter quitter. The shot that landed in the first round, the second round. Good right hook, but now Maurice Hooker is looking for the, shots, the punches to come now. He just got hit with a good right hit hook from Blair Flair. But was it enough to win a round? I don't think so. Jackson, what's up, Jackson? Appreciate you for the first super chat we got today. And JJ says, let's go, champ. This super chat is from my daughter, Paris who is actually a big combat sports fan. She says, hello, and appreciate you, champ. Oh, so sweet, so nice. Tell her I said, ar, 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 a bark, a bite, a left kick, a right kick, and an overhand right. Tell her I hope she, stop it! Put that girl out of her misery. Yeah, tell her I said, thanks for the super chat, and we appreciate her at K9 Boxing. And hashtag, dogs are us. <laughs> Yeah. Spider moves, said James Tony spooked Holyfield when he stuck his tongue out at him. I don't know about all that. That stuff don't mean listen. Put your tongue out. That ain't, you don't do nothing with me when you put your tongue out. All you're doing is, is letting me, is just, okay, I'm, I'm going to punch you in your, your, your head harder the next time. So I think when you put your tongue out, that don't really, it don't get to a real fighter. A real fighter, you go, all you're going to do is just, oh, that ain't nothing to me. 
I'm going to knock your head off. That's all. Oh, oh, good left hook. A right hook, left hook from Cobbs. And he done hurt Maurice Hooker again. He need to start going in and throwing body shots and then come back to the head. And he, he what he need to do is probably push Maurice Hooker. Oh, the other head, but another, I told you it's going to happen, didn't I? I told you, another head, but now this time, like it's a head, but on top of the head. Didn't I call it an SB? Because it's a head, but he's stopping the cop. They look and see this his face. Oh, okay, I didn't see it. Look. Dang, look. Bam, just on the head bump. Boom. Oh, no, I was just, that was on a, on a jaw. Now, that was just on a jaw. His jaw might be broke, though. That was a good head bump on a jaw. Watch the head bump. Bam, right on the jaw. That was a, that was on a jaw. Oh, I thought it was, I knew it was going to be another head bump, though. Another head bump. Man, listen, I wouldn't be surprised if we see another head. If we don't see another head, but but listen, if 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 Bladder Flair cannot Maurice Hooker out, he can fight for a world title his next fight. Listen, he is winning. He is doing good. Listen, at the end of the day, if if it goes to distance and they call it a draw, even if they gave it to, let's say they gave it to Maurice Hooker, it's still a win for Blair Blair Flair. Yeah, <laughs> good work, champ. Look, Leather Flair is looking like he looking like a man. He looking real good. He looking like don't don't get me don't be mad at me when I say this. He looking like Shakur Stevenson in there. That boy is boxing. He is looking good though. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. So all of what he kept saying, you know, he predestinated to come. Like he said, I'm Leather Flair. You know, I'm I'm a beast. I'm a dog. You know. Words is powerful, and today he's actually looking like a beast. He is looking like a dog, y'all. He's looking like a canine. Arr, 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 look at him, y'all. That boy bouncing around, and listen, he like, listen, I'm just going to box. You know, you might call it running, but he ain't running. He moving. Cause how he running, he done knocked the man down two times and hurt the man six, seven times, and, oh, another right hook, and then he... Gets up out of there. Ain't nothing but a gangster party. Stick and move, champ. Listen, Tans Crawford might be your boy, but he can't fight for you. He can't fight for you. Look at him. He moving. Sticking and moving. Bouncing. I can hear the crowd going, boo. But Bladder Flair said, I don't care. I'm taking this one home. I'm taking this one back to the valley. We taking this one home, y'all. You hear me? You ain't going to see me on K9 Boxing viral video. I'm winning this one. We taking this one to the crib. That boy got legs, you can tell. He ain't been having sex with the wifey. Now look, man, Maurice Hooker like, man, why don't you just fight? Why don't you just cut the ring off? You know, you can't tell a man to stop and just fight. I mean, you got to do your job. If the man ain't fighting, make him fight. Oh, and that's the bell. Wow. Free at last. Free at last. God is good, y'all. Joey said Hooker is punch drunk. Oh, man. Listen. What is Crawford telling him? We need to hear this. Get a punch. Yeah, he's scared. Of it. If I punch, I might get punched. Free. Arr, arr, arr. Yeah, but you got to see, that's the thing about it, is that, you know, just because you're a, a great fighter don't mean you're a great trainer. So, Crawford, you are a great fighter, but you're not the trainer. And even if you, you know, can give some insight, it's hard to give somebody insight on what you would do. He's not you. He's not going to be able to do what you're doing. His style is totally different than yours. You know, you know how to move, stick and move. You know how to catch guys off angles. He is front foot heavy you know when I say front foot heavy he's stuck on his front foot and I see Bernard Hopkins playing like yep you're right K9 K9 calling it and he can't get out the way of punches see so now you know Crawford not doing it on purpose but he can mess mess around and get his his friend knocked out trying to do something he might not be capable of doing you know he about to find out though 
But now he's punching. Look, finally he's punching. That was a slip. And I know, but don't it don't look good when you fall, though. All you doing is, is, is letting your opponent know, oh, man, he can be put to the canvas. I know when a guy's put to the canvas, whether I pushed him or he, I'm going to want to see him fall again. He going he gonna to let me know or uh, remind me of what I'm trying to do. So, Blader Flair, you know, it's not looking good when it comes to all that moving around. We want to see a fight. But he's doing what he has to do to survive the big puncher and Maurice Hooker. And at the end of the day, he went in a fight. So why take chances that I don't have to take? I'm a punch and move like he just did, left hand and move. You know, he's, he's moving around to the left, moving around to the right. I'm going to tell you who desperate. Maurice Hooker desperate. So if he messes around and run into something, it's going to be on him. You gotta you still got to respect the person that got a good. Remember, that's how Javante Davis knocked out Roley. Hey, he was trying to knock um, Javante Davis out with no respect, and bam, it's over. And you got to remember, I'm not saying that uh, Blair and Flair Cobbs is Javante Davis, but um, we're looking at the similar or the same fight. He's running to him, running in. I don't know if um, Blair and Flair going to throw the overhand left or not, though. He might he might not have experience. One thing about it is Javante Davis got a lot of experience, you know, and – Blader Flair don't have the same experience. And in his last fight, you know, he was knocked out. So, but guess what? Hooker is there for the taking. The overhand left is there. I just don't know if Blair can throw it like Javante Davis. And he is desperate. He's moving in. But Blader Flair got them legs. And that's something that Maurice Hooker don't have. He don't got legs. And that's what's helping Blader Flair win these last few rounds. On his le- and it's helping him not to get caught with one of them one-hitter quitters. With 14 seconds left in the round, guess who's winning the fight, y'all? Love it, hate it, like it, Blair the Flair. Yeah, and it's easy to say throw punches, but I'm not going to punch to miss and mess around and get caught with a counter punch, you know, from um, Blair the Flair. And once again, we're going to see Terrence Crawford trying to Urge his boy on. But when it's over, it's over. And his trainer, that's right, the same trainer Terrence Crawford got, telling him the same thing. You got to get close enough to be able to land them shots. Yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah, better flair. Like I say, he looking like he the one losing, but he the one winning. And, um, man, they panicking over in um, Maurice Hooker's corner because it's the last round. It's about to be over with. I agree with you, Jose. Spence is going to take Crawford to school. Yeah, no rolly on the wrist today, champ. Yeah, Hooker don't know how to cut the ring off. Now he's now he's fighting like he should have been fighting. Put more pressure. Like, get in there and put more pressure. Now he's putting more pressure. Like, hey, it's the last round. It's now or never. How long? Not long. <laughs> Not for long. Uh-oh. And he got to just, hey, guns blazing. He got to let him go. Look, let him go. These guys don't know how to cut the ring off. That's why I try to teach my son how to cut the ring off. The man step to the right, step to the right with a one-two. Step over there before he get there. And that's what you got to do. Cobbs is having his way. Cobb is not on the, listen, on the ropes for long at all. Look, he's moving. Not like he's running. I ain't going to lie. He's like he's running now, y'all. But, hey, whatever whatever it takes. Uh, he wants the dub. Like, this is very impressive to be able to get back, come back, and, and, and win a fight. Especially when you just lost it like the way he lost his last fight. Blatter Flair, look at him, y'all. One minute, 53 seconds in the career of Maurice Hooker. If he go out there and lose this fight, it's over. It's over. Yeah, yeah it's going to be over. He letting the guy that he's supposed to knocked out on paper drop him two times. And Oscar looking like, wow. Look at this boy, Bledder Flair. We like him because he can talk. 
You know, but today, hey, he he talked the talk and walked the walk. He didn't bounce back. I thought he was gonna be on another viral video. It's over. It's over. Stop it. And look, Maurice Hooker have no legs. I mean, look at him, y'all. The Maurice Hooker and Terrence Crawford don't look, look like they got the same. I mean, yeah, like they don't look like they got the same trainer. Terrence all Terrence, I mean, yeah, Terrence all over the place. And, and Maurice Hooker is like a zombie. He just, he's like a mummy. Slow footed. He's walking like his feet is in quicksand. And he gonna probably say, man, he kept running. You gotta cut the ring off. It's one way to stop a guy from running. If he running, go to the body. He should have went to the body. But he wasn't able to get close enough to go to the body. And when he did get in close, he got hit. Now what I don't like that uh, Cobb is, isn't doing right now is he not still going throwing punches like like he just did? Thank you. You can still punch back. It ain't got to be with full force because when you punch with full force, you know, and you miss, you liable to get knocked out with a counter punch. So you don't want to punch with full force, mess around and miss because then the guy all he got to do is roll the shot and come back with something and that same full force of your shot is going to backfire on you and you be the one they be counting 10 too. Or four. Oh, wow. The man done won him fight. He done stole the victory. Done put put the tongue out. Done threw his hands up in the air. Wow. The upset of the year. I had to give it to Blair the Flair. Oh, man, listen. It's over. It's over. Stop it. I can't believe it. I just knew that Maurice Hooker was going to win this one. When they told me, SB and them, that they was putting Blair Flair in there with Maurice Sucker, I was like, oh, man, is they trying to sacrifice this boy? Oh, my goodness. I just knew it was over with. SB, did you, did you, have, did you think that um, Blair Flair was going to win? Huh? Well, I still, you didn't answer the question. I wish I could have got your prediction early on. Cobbs, 97-91. I agree with you, Jackson. It's definitely a wide margin, whatever it is. I, you never gave me a prediction. That's why I said I wish I would have had your prediction. No, no, that's why I said I wanted your prediction, because then... I could be saying, oh, no, no, SB. No, no, wifey. Boom. Look at that left hand. Huh? Oh, no, we ain't going for that. They showing the replay. Blair straight down the middle with the left hand. Ah, oh, no. That girl is over here capping. Tell me something. I'll be picking two people. Stop it. No, it's over. It's over. I'm back with the sunglasses. Y'all see me. How you like them, boy, huh? Oh, man, I can't wait to hear this. And the winner, they should say, surprisingly, they should say, hold on, what should they say? Look, the, the, uh, the ring announcer, he can't even, listen, he can't even believe it. Listen, to, listen, y'all. I can't believe it. In the upset of the year. Scorecards. <clears throat> he talking to the referee. Maurice Hunker like, man, did I get it? No, it's over. Unanimous. <clears throat> he looking up at the sky. I hope he thanking God. Oh, your mouth will get you in trouble, boy. And all that talking he be doing, boy. But hey, I'm happy for him, man, because he mean well. I don't think, you know, I don't think that he mean, you know, you know, to be, you know, a certain kind of way. I don't think he, you know, he want to be a butthole or none of that. You know what I mean? I just think that he's really, uh, um. Enthusiastic young man. He's very outspoken. And um, 
that's just the kind of guy he is. So I don't really think he means any harm when he, you know, when he um brags or he says what he gonna do to somebody. Um, now it's sad for Maurice Hooker to lose because he said he was dedicating it to your young lady, you know, who was um his photo for, for photographer, I believe, and um, you know, I I expected more out of him, and they showing the replay, a cop just. Beating a brace off Maurice Hooker's like, down goes Hooker. Oh, and another overhand left from Cops. Oh, another left hand right down the middle. Down goes Hooker. Stop it. Oh, he lucky the referee ain't stopped the fight. Oh, and another left hand straight down the middle. I mean, man, that man was there to be hit time and time and time again. Look, they showing my man's cook Cobb just unleashing shots. Wow, the man made it. Definitely a, a great bounce back for his career because, um, yeah, y'all, yeah, the man bounced back like never before. Wow. Yeah, we live, too. I, I, I love it. Blair the Fair Car, we on Twitter with it, you hear me? That's a good look. We got to take it to the gram. That's all. Let me see where we at with it. You know what I mean? Hey, listen, Blair the Flair, he might fight for a world title next, y'all. We on Twitter with it. Good look, y'all. That's a good look. So we got the co main event coming up, S. We got to take it to the gram. That's all. The girls, okay. Oh, yeah, I didn't even know there were some girls on there. You know what I mean? Hey, listen, Blair the Flair, he might fight for a world. Oh, hold on, Mike McKenzie, he a southpaw, though, at least. Good look, like a little dude, though, you know? But, hey, he look little to be a well, he fight welterweight. He like, he fight 135 or something. Okay. Oh, yeah, I didn't even he ain't got no power. And he look little. It's over. It's over, SB. Oh, hold on, Mike McKenzie, he a southpaw though. Significant yeah, British good. victories yeah. on America's soul. Well, hey. Frosh versus Taylor. Hamid yeah. versus yeah. Kevin yeah. Kelly. And Huntingham yeah. versus yeah. Curry. Ooh, yes. That was a good one, 1986. Yeah, he ain't got no uh, honey. Yeah, oh man, yeah. That guy, that guy, that was a fight. Yeah. Uh, Frosh beating Jermaine Taylor. Oh man. That was that was a bad look for Jermaine Taylor. Frosh versus we got we got two fights to go, and it's over. Versus Curry, ooh yeah, that was a good one, 1986. Uh, honey, yeah, oh man, yeah, that guy, that guy, that was a fight. It's over, y'all. Frost beating Jermaine Taylor. Wow. We got two fights down, two to go. I, that's what I like about the zone. You see, they put fights on back to back. They don't hold them up. But now nah, that fight went the distance. Yeah, that fight went the distance. The zone ain't bad. Hey, listen, I, I really can't say no network that actually does boxing is bad for boxing. Uh, we need as many eyeballs as possible. That's why, I listen, I ain't, I, look, I'm a little upset. The fight between Hasin Rodman and Jake Paul didn't happen, but I ain't mad because. I think Hasin Rodman Jr. would have beat Jake Paul. I mean, just think, just look at how when they were sparring. I believe what Hasin Rodman Jr. said. He said that he was only allowed to use one arm. Just look at how he's beating up um, Jake Paul. He's beating him up with one arm. So imagine he got two arms. So if Jake Paul would have fought tonight, because the fight was scheduled for tonight, and he would have lost. Man, listen, that would have been a bad look for boxing. A lot of little suburban kids want to fight or think they can fight because Jake Paul is fighting or can fight or ain't never lost. So, yeah, I'm, I'm like I say, I'm upset, but I ain't mad. Now, Jake Paul has the opportunity to 
think somebody he know he could beat again and look good and bring more suburban kids to the sport of boxing. And me being on the other side of the coin, you know, tails, you know what I mean? Heads or tails, whichever one you want to you wanna pick. You know, hey, I, I like young guys coming to the gym like, hey, K-9, train me. It's a good look. Yeah, so ex sponsor we got ladies that's up in the game now. And this young lady, I, I remember seeing her fight. She's a tough little cookie. Yeah, she's a tough little cookie. And, um, yeah, I'm excited to see her fight. Jake Paul wants to fight you now, K-9. Yeah, right. Uh, I'm not going to fight him on a short notice. I'm telling you that for sure. I don't care how much money he's offering me. I'm not going to do it. But I bet you Jake Paul will fight me at 200 pounds. Cause I ain't a hundred. I'm not a 200 pound fighter. He'll fight me at 215, exactly. But he is not gonna fight me for sure at you know 154. But 220, he'll fight me. See what I'm saying? Cause he know I'm a little dude. You feel me? And if I'm 215, 220, if I'm past 160 something. I'm out of shape. So, yeah, he'll take a chance with me. Just let you know. He playing the game. K-9, K-9 wins by KO, Rizola. Tell him again. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, if he, if, listen, if Jay Paul offered me $2 million and he give me Three months to get ready. I would probably consider that. I would definitely get in the best shape I can, and then, you know, I I I get together. So I think I could beat Jake Paul. Like one thing I ain't gonna do is I ain't gonna let him hurt me, and I'm gonna figure him out. I'm gonna get sharp, for sure. Yeah, I know Jake Paul made forty million dollars last last year. So listen, you can't be mad at him for that. $40 million? Let me rewind that. That man made $40 million last year. You can't tell me boxing ain't paying. Anytime a YouTuber can come in the sport of boxing and make $40 million in one year, that lets you know boxing is paying big money. So if you got fans, or if you got hands, you should definitely be in the sport of boxing. Not MMA. Because they will use you up, ball you up, and throw you away. It is not enough money in MMA. Man, those guys are loved by the fans and Dana White. Because he is the one that's taking all the money. He's getting all the money. And this lady right here, she's focused. She ain't running rings, laughing, smiling. You know? But the, the crazy thing about boxing and MMA is if you cross over to a different sport, you can make more money by crossing over. Like, if Tyson Fury was to get an MMA ring with, with one of the MMA fighters, they probably would pay him a gang, a gang of money. You believe that, SB? Then again, they might not pay him a gang of money because think about it. Dana White, he tight. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it is empty. Yeah. SB says it's actually empty at the arena. Yeah, but um, the main event ain't started yet. You got to remember when the main event comes, that's people start sitting down. They probably all buying liquor. Yeah, but hey. Ortiz, he's a Mexican. He's a... So, yeah, it's the young lady right here. This, this girl can fight right here. Hey, Responsa. Exponsa, that girl can fight. She tough. Ain't she the girl that lost to um Amanda Serrano? I think that's her. That girl tough. Yeah, she look like she you know she like she got a little stomach on her, but you would you you couldn't be able to tell. Like Andy Andy Reese Jr. was the same way though, but he had a lot of stomach on him. All that stomach he had and he was throwing a thousand punches. 
She, she definitely like she done did a sit up ever in her life. That girl ain't got no packs. Yeah. She had a husband? She do? Oh, she had a husband and a baby? Oh, that's good. Because you would think right away that, you know, she'd be on the other side. You know, when you when you a boxer, a female boxer, you would think, oh, she tough. You know? Bush Jones. But no. She married with a baby. Oh, Married with Children, one of my favorite sitcoms. Oh, yeah, Henry J. Easy work. You can't put no UFC fighter in there with me. I'm going to knock him out for sure. Yeah. Yeah, she. I know. I heard you. Atomic, atomic Action Boxing. Yeah, I'm not. Listen, you can you can bring up anybody's name you want to bring up. If it ain't enough time, if it don't make sense dollar-wise, I ain't going to waste my time. I'm happy where I'm at now and what I'm doing now. There you go. Al Bundy. Boxing ain't no joke. You can't play boxing, so I ain't going to play it at all. No to the no-no. I see my dog. You see my man right there? What's his name again, SB? The cut man? It's been a long time. You could be my dog, and I might not even know your name. A lot of people on here, that's my dog. And I ain't never saw him before. Yeah. You know, I got a lot of guys, my dog. Like, I mean, that's my dog right there. You forget people's names. Out of sight, out of mind. Carlos, there you go. Has to be remembering everything. Yeah. I like these shades. I had to let y'all see the new shades I bought today. You like them, SB? Not really. Wow. I called you. Let me take them back. Oh, okay. I wouldn't have bought these mugs. Cost me a, a bag, girl. Which one? Keep me. Don't keep telling me. I said which one. I don't listen. I don't know what exactly mean, champ. Guzman. Guzman, like she in shape though. 1901. She's from Memphis, Venezuela. She's t yeah, 1901. Yeah, look. She like, look, just because you look like you in shape don't mean you in shape. Or just because you in shape don't mean that you're going to win. You know, it's about game plan. Game plan, game plan, game plan. Listen, this girl, she about to fight. This girl right here, that girl tough. Real Mexican fighter. Her trainer Mexican, Carlos, in the game still. I like because he's faded. I ain't even saw him in a minute. Exparza. Exparza. Expar, like, let's spar. From Houston, Texas. I'm giving it to Exparza. Y'all y'all know? Exparza, let's go, champ. From Houston, Texas. That's her, husband that's her husband with the Nike shirt on? Oh, that's good. Yeah, right here. Hey, listen, she can have a sugar daddy. Why would you say it now? I'm going to believe. I don't believe you're going to tell the truth. So, but you lied, so now I can't believe you're going to tell the truth. Ain't no common sense. Ain't no common sense. This girl might like older people. Mm-hmm. Boy, oh, boy, y'all. Oh, yeah, JP, I pray to you, your family, and me and my family, you know, are super blessed, highly favored. 
In Jesus' name, ooh, right away. Exparza comes out with an overhand right. Good little fat look. Man, Guzman's fast. She threw about six jabs. Like I couldn't count if it was six or eight or four with. But she threw some quick ones. And she matching good. You hear me? She got the red gloves with the red shoes with the red shorts. I'm surprised that Exparza don't have, she, she got the green socks with the green shirt. Where's the green gloves at? With the green shoes. Ooh, overhand right, then left hook from Exparza. She, yeah, they don't like the same weight class. That little, that little girl, all muscles. She might have them big legs, and legs might be strong. For Guzman. Uh, one thing I like about the um, women's boxing is they, they only got two minutes. Two minutes so they go out there and throw rock and sock and punches. Kind of more like an exhibition or like an amateur fight. Fast pace. Punches and bunches. There you go. Hey, look, we see real action though. You ain't got no, you got no choice. If you don't give us no action, you don't get no TV time. And you only got two minutes. Two minutes to make an impression. And the winner is, if it goes a distance, the one that put on for the fans. Experience, and she's she like, she can box a little bit now. She got them hands open. I can't stand the white gloves. And white gloves be looking so pillowish. They be looking like pillows. Oh, look, and she look experience losing the first round. I'm gonna give it to Guzman so far. The little lady. With the longer hair. Oh, I thought she got the oh good over here right though from Exparza. And then she's holding and hitting. Where the referee at? These referees are slow on their feet. Oh man, they must be eating turtle because they slow as I don't know what. Too many rounds. That's the end of the first round. Big O, you a smart man. I'm not saying bet though, but listen, I appreciate you that you're going for me. Oh, yeah, 50 Cent versus K-9. Stop it! Huh? Oh, yeah, it definitely is. That's okay. You got to wake him up, though. Let them know we are here. We should have took this one to the ground. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I want to get down with the Twitch. That's the one. I got to get active on Twitter. I don't be active on there. I be on the other side of things. Round two. And guess what? A minute and 50 seconds left. Because they too many rounds. Esparza. Esparza a beast now. She ain't lost the... Ooh, good right hand from Esparza. Straight down the middle. She ain't lost to Amanda Serrano. Who's a beast. She's way bigger than her, you know, her uh, opponent. Like, like, like SB was saying, how does she make weight? Or how is they in the same weight class? Like, her arms, her her face, you know what I mean? You know what? She got a bigger upper body, but her lower body is small. You see the size difference in the lower body? The other girl got this bigger, lower, what, ooh, uppercuts, hooks, Guzman with a great combination. But yeah, oh, then yeah, right hand hook, oh, look at Guzman. A little lady, a smaller upper upper frame with a bigger lower frame, and opposites attract. Good combination from both girls. Expires it with the big upper body, but the smaller lower body. Oh, good old hand right. Then she goes up under. Um, Gusman's one twos. Oh, good luck combination. These girls nowadays can fight. I mean, they they really can fight. Good double jab from a. Guzman, I might have to get Guzman this round. She throwing more punches, but the cleaner shots are being landed by Esparza. Esparza, you know, she looking at her, fainting. She she boxing real good, though. Good combination from both girls. And then guess who ends it with a jab? Esparza. Good jab from her. Esparza. Then she moves around. She done learned a little bit since she, the fight she didn't have with Amanda. She smartly knows gonna hold. And 
one, two. Right hand from Spraza. A right hand misses from Guzman. But who? What? Oh, what are they trying to bet? Huh? I mean, what what, you, what are you trying to bet? I bet Carissa Shields wins. Now, if they rob Carissa Shields, I can see that happening. But in our eyes, if you, if you're a real one and you and you being truthful, I bet Carissa Shields really wins, even if they take the fight from her. Because she's fighting Savannah Marshall overseas, you know both I, both me and you got eyes, and I guarantee you, I can just about bet you that Carissa will win. Even though they might call it a draw, they might try to give it to Savannah Marshall because remember it's overseas in her country, so Carissa gonna have to almost kill Savannah Marshall to get a W in her country. Round three. At K9 Boxing. Esparza with the overhand right. I think, oh, another overhand right from Esparza. Oh, another overhand right from Esparza. Good combination from Guzman. Oh, a little hook from, oh, man, these girls are trading shots now. They want to win, both of them. Oh, good right hand from um, Esparza. Esparza didn't get kind of sharp. Like, she's a lot better than, you know, and she looked in her last fight. She's slipping good, jabbing, slipping. The girl can box. You know, um, Guzman with the combination, but guess what? Esparza ain't, ain't there to be hit. These girls is fighting, though. Look, good combination from Guzman. Esparza smartly holds her. He, she grabs her. Boom, good combination from, oh, good combination from Esparza. And Guzman. Both these girls is fighting good fight. A combination is galore. They listen in two minute rounds, they throw more punches in it. Then uh oh, then Cobb and Hooker threw in the whole fight, and they whole fight. And in two minute rounds of a ten round fight. Good combination again from both girls. Good right hook from Sponza. Right hand misses from Guzman. Double jab miss from Guzman. Good double jab, then push from a sponsor. Then another push from a sponsor. Good, oh, good combination from Guzman, and it landed. Who? Oh, Guzman, good, yeah, Guzman tough. She looked a little old in the face. But hey, she fighting. Who said that? Wow. Oh, wow. You say you think that Savannah Marshall is going to stop Clarissa Shields? Stop it! No, I doubt it. Okay, I bet you 50 push-ups that, that Savannah Marshall don't stop Clarissa Shields. 50 push-ups. And you got to do a recorder. You got to send a recorder to my um my Instagram. DM me the 50 push-ups. Ooh, they showing a replay. Oh, and a replay, overhand right. Yeah, from um, Esparza. And Guzman came back with a nice little combination to the head of Esparza. I don't know, because there ain't no big main event. Good combination again for Guzman. Guzman in and out. Good, another little good combination from Guzman. Even though she's not landing a lot of her punches, she's missing more than she's landing, she's active. At least she's throwing punches. The cleaner shots are being landed by Esparza. <clears throat> the good boxing is by Esparza. But the combinations is Guzman all day. Another good combination, but the cleaner shot was landed by Esparza. <clears throat> Another combination from Espar I mean from uh, Guzman, but Esparza di dipped out of there, didn't get hit. Good little combination from Guzman. 
jab from um, Go, uh, from a, from Guzma. Esparza comes back. Oh, good right hook to the body from uh, Esparza. Bounce combination to the body from Guzma. There, Esparza dog walks her in the headlock. Oh, good body shot from uh, Guzma. And another combination. Then another combination from Guzma. Oh, man, good combination from Guzma again. She's clearly winning this round. Another combination, the left hook to the body at the end from Guzma. Another combination from Guzma. Then a left hook, right hand from Esparza. Right hand from Guzma. And then Esparza measures her with the left hand. Comes back with the right hand and a left hook on top from Esparza. Then Smiley gets out the way. Good body shot from Esparza. Then a left uppercut up the middle from, oh, Guzma. Guzma comes back to the one, two. Esparza, she shakes her hand to her corner or the crowd. Oh, then a right hook from Esparza. Then a guns Guzma with another right hand. And another combination from both girls. Good body shot from um, <coughs> Guzma. It's heating up. Even Oscar's sitting up a little close tonight. Join the fight. And that's the bell. And hey, Guzma said something to um, Esparza at the end of the bell. I don't know what she said, but whatever she said, hey, stop it. It's a good fight so far. Said Ben Lozas don't play, they don't. Matthew Dow said, three hour watch party, K9 is known for his longevity. You already know I won my first world title at 37 years old. <laughs> so we gonna do it old, we gonna do it long and strong. That's right. Old money still spin. Huh? Facts. What'd you say, champ? Pause. Long and strong, champ. You know me. You know me, champ. Don't fake the funk. Who? What'd you say? I can't see it on this. Awesome. You said, well, you're right. What you and I will post it. If I win, send me a shout out in one of your videos. God bless you, brother. Okay. Yeah, if he wins, now if he win by what? Now we supposed to be by knockout because he said he went way above and said he gonna she gonna knock her out. Ooh, good combination by both girls. Now they swinging harder this round. This the fifth round. It must be the money round. Oscar De La Hoya must have said if you knock her out in the fifth round. When I say her, I'm talking about her. Which either one of y'all knock each other out in the fifth round and it's over. And Sparza on Chris's scorecard has him her up 40 to 60. I don't know. That little girl, Kuzma, is throwing combinations for days. Oh, good right hand. Another good right hand from um, Exponsa in the left hook. <clears throat> the combinations are being displayed by Kuzma. She's throwing more combinations. And the one punch power shots are being landed by Exponsa. Exponsa with another good combination and a right hook to the head. Ooh, she's throwing some good haymakers, but she's she's being beat to the punch. <clears throat> the good combinations are coming from the smaller Guzma, but the harder punches and the heavier punches and the one shots, the one hitter quitters are coming from Exponsa. With 25 seconds left in the round. Hey, Guzman, listen, she she got heart. Hey, and she's thorough. You know, she's she letting her hands go. Good little right hand with 10 seconds left in the round. A right hook, left hook. A right hand, left hook from Esparza. Combination from, from Guzman. Oh, another good right hook. The right hook is there for Esparza all day long. She hitting it with that overhand right. A bark, a bite. Expires it with the overhand right. Tonight, at will. At will. I would have a bet with you on the Savannah Marshall versus Christian Shields fight. What you saying, G? <laughs> uh, what is y'all saying? Oh, man. Floyd wouldn't, wouldn't, wanna, wouldn't want that to happen. He'll run away from that. K-9 versus Floyd in the exhibition. Stop it! Oh, man, it's over. It's over, champ. You already know what it is, though, Gino. Matthew, dog, my man's in them. Dog, 
test my man's in him. And when you see <clears throat> an extra person in the ring, you know, they just trying to make sure that nobody's doing anything fishy, <clears throat> you know, in a corner. They actually work for the commission. We're in round six with one minute, 45 seconds left in the round. Right hand misses by Exparza. So I said misses because she's a miss. The misses with the miss. The missus misses. And Gus my misses again. Oh, the missus. Exparza with the miss. Double jab miss from Guzma. Uh, jab miss from Exparza. Like a good sparring session. So you got the, she got the perfect name. Exparza with the sparring session. Good little sparring session. Like nobody bleeding, none of that. Like a good sparring session without no headgear. With small gloves on. Am I right around though? Don't it like a sparring session though? Like a good sparring session. Like real fast punches, like blah, blah, blah. Like, that's it. It's like a sparring session, to be honest with you. I mean, they hit each other, though. Good little check hook um, from um, Esparza. But I think that um, Guzman landed a little something, too, but it's just she don't have a heavier hand. She's a little girl. Ooh, she just got caught a good left hook. I think that hurt her a little bit. Look, she's trying to bounce to get her legs together. Oh, but guess what? Esparza's actually got a little nick on her left side of her face. A knick knack patty rack. Good little left hook, right hook, though. Ever, evidently, Sparza can't punch or something because Guzman is taking it. But she looks like she's in good shape. And when you're in good shape, you can take more. You know, you can actually give more, too. And she's throwing a good combination. She threw a great combination to almost end the round. But then she's getting caught with a good combination. That's Guzma. Guzma, don't she look a little older in the face, though? Yeah, or either she's been through a whole lot in her life. Yeah, no Sabero tonight, buddy. Not tonight. Tell him again, champ. Jake Paul said, like and subscribe. Yes, indeed. Appreciate everybody that's tapping in. You already know we own it. Not long. As B. They can't do it. Like we do it, champ. You know, only thing helping them is, is, is them followers, champ. You hear me? Make sense? Oh, man. Floyd Mayweather paid the way for them, for them boys. But, yeah, once they get a load of me, stop it. It's over. It's over, champ. The truth shall set you free. We in round seven, y'all. And um, shoot, even though Guzman is throwing more punches, she getting hit with that overhand right too much. I mean, my favorite punch is overhand right. I'm like, you know what? Forget all this. I'm swinging for the fences. The bark, the bite, and now the overhand right. It's over. Stop it. And good little sparring session from Exparza. Exparza versus Guzman. And Guzman with the good jab. Another good jab with the one, two. She just don't like she's strong enough. Another combination from Guzman. She's trying to win this round, though. If not, nothing else. Oh, good little check hook from Exparza. Exparza is clearly not the faster female in this fight. But she has, you know, the bigger punch. She's... More accurate, you know, even though um, Guzman is throwing more punches, she's missing more punches. She just threw three punches, four punches, and she landed one and missed three. The accurate person is Esparza, who just threw a jab and landed. See, another jab and landed. Then the hook landed actually from Guzman. And then Esparza puts her in the headbutt or the headlock. The referee smartly warns him. 
It's good we haven't seen the referee because we don't need to see him. Whenever it's a good fight, no need for the referee to be in the way. Now, what was you saying, SB, about the, um, the wifey or the girlfriend of Oscar De La Hoya? Oh. Uh, I don't know what it is, but um, Oscar worth a hundred million or more. He did. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So, and he got a lot of rest, you know. But hey, he had a long, good career. He do. Man, I ain't even going out like that. Lost the listen. I got. A few too many as it is that I don't even feel like I even should have on my record. The boxing is dirty, y'all. Now I got Guzman losing. She throwing good shots, but you know, what's up, beat man? Stop it. What's up, beat man? I got um I got the champ winning. You gotta take it from a champ. You know, you can't that we ain't giving you you know, no decision by split. You know, if you better, if you want to win, you better win by unanimously. You mean to go out there and do your thing. See, the, the cleaner shots are by the bigger girl. This girl, um, Esparza is the bigger girl, and she's landing the cleaner and more effective shots. Uh, Guzman can't expose her will. Like, she throwing combinations. She just got hit with one shot that threw off balance because she's a smaller young lady. And um, good jab from Esparza. See, another jab from Esparza. She's making her punches count while Guzman is just putting them out there, you know? And she just threw three jabs, missed all three of them, threw another two jabs. And her last five jabs, she's zero and five. She's six, zero and six, zero and seven. Threw a right hand, got hit, threw a right hand and hit. She just missed another. She ain't landed a jab in the last... And she just missed the hook, missed another hook. Like, you can't count punches that she's missing. I mean, don't get me wrong, she's trying. and She's a good little fighter. I like her style, but she needs to be fighting a smaller weight class from, from the way she looks. She don't need to be fighting in a weight class that Esparza is in. Or Esparza is just a big, a big young lady, a big girl. Good one-two jab from Esparza. Good, oh, and a good four-punch combination from Guzman and good body shots after that. So her her best her attributes is going to the body. When she go to the head, she's missing bad. When she go to the body, you know, the body don't move. The head can move all day long, but the body ain't going nowhere. Oh, good check hook from Esparza. Oh, then another good straight right hand by Esparza. But guess who's there? Punching back. Good one. She tough, though. I like the little girl. Hey. The little lady. Ooh, with that overhand right, she's like, she can't get out the way to overhand right to save her life. My goodness. Oh, good little hook from the literal lady. You know, hey, she mean well. JP, what's up, champ? Beat man, what it do? Arr, arr, arr. A bark, a bite. And for uh, Esparza, an overhand right. Welcome to K9 Box. Hashtag dogs us. Hey, we the best. And my name ain't DJ Cocklick. Or whatever his name is. Cocklin. Cockleg. <laughs> Cockstrong. That, this was Cockstrong mean. This is Cockstrong. Diesel, you hear me? Because they said for something else. I'm just saying, SB, looking like Salmon Girl, fresh meat. Here we go, y'all. Round nine, and what looks to be a sparring session, and it's like a sparring session for real. Oh, another good right hand from Esparza. Another jab right hand from Guzman. Guzman is trying. Look, she ain't listening. She got a lot of game, a lot of heart. She just seemed like she's in a, a heavier weight class. 
And she just looked at her, her, her trainer like, I'm doing my best. I'm, I'm giving it my all. But my all ain't enough. I'm hitting this girl. This girl is not going anywhere. Like, how much does she weigh? I mean, after the weigh-in, she must have gained 20 pounds. It, might, it probably was the same weight yesterday. Today, it's a whole different ball game. Look at that. A lightweight versus a featherweight. Ooh, then she hit in the back of the head. And that, I don't like to see that. These people, these referees are allowing people to get hit in the back of the head a lot lately. And people need to go home to their families. The same way they walk in the ring, they need to walk out the ring with their senses. Guzman with the jab. Another jab she didn't miss. I bet you she done missed a thousand jabs today. Good combination, though. And she just missed the right hand. And Esparza just missed the jab. So yeah, they both need to work on their jab because they missed a lot of jabs. A lot of jabs. And speaking of jabs, shout out to Jabs, Birmingham, and K9 Boxing. Good triple jab. Now, them body shots is good. And the body shots for Guzman is fire. She got good body shots. She letting them go. With 10 seconds left in the round, this fight over with quick. The right hand to the body again from Guzman. Overhand right from who? You already know. Expounds with the overhand right. Yeah, one more round to go. And shoot, I can see why the women don't don't make the money the men make. I mean, first of all, you only get two men rounds. You know? And um, shoot. And you, you know. Hey, you gotta pay your dues. You know, men and just walk in the sport. And, and make millions, you know. They got a, lo a long, rich history in boxing. You, know, you got people like Jack Johnson who paved the way for boxers. Boxing been around since the what, the, the 1800s? Sb, huh? Shoot, a few great strings over there. You, you said no. I'm gonna love you. When you get 70 years old, girl, we gonna all get old one day. Better believe that I'm gonna be in this chair right here, the rocking chair tomorrow. Some, Stop it! <laughs> it's over. Last round. Oh yeah, she coming out punches, punches and bunches like the first round. Guzman, Guzman. She just need to be accurate. If she was more accurate, she would be winning a fight. In my eyes, because she's throwing punches, but she's just not accurate enough. I think it's just the size of experience that's just throwing her off. Like, the size she's bumping um, Guzman. Guzman throwing punches back. But she's just, it's just the size. I can just hit you with a jab and knock you off balance. Oh, good right hand from um, the best punch of the night for um, Guzman. She stepped over and threw the right hand. Boom. Boom. Almost was down goes Exponser. Overhand right. Guzman finally gets out the way of it. Now she should be going to the body wash. While Exponser's got her head in it, down. She's had her in the head like she should be. Her hands is free. Go to the body. Oh, good one too from Exponser. I mean from Guzman. Uh-oh. Exponser let her know. She bouncing. Huh? Oh, no, I didn't see it. Oh, she do? Okay. Okay, yeah, they both bouncing. Now. A little bruise that um, Esparza got. Oh, you two on the back, back of her shoes. Okay, you like that? Yeah, it is. Look like they might be heavy. Ooh, good one-two hook from Esparza. And then another hook. Oh, what, what was this at the whole fight? This run round, she went in clearly. Oh, the overhand right. She throwing that all day long. Man, I think um, Guzman is happy it's over with. Like, this girl's just big. Like, you know, I may have hit her with four, five, six, seven shots, but she hit me with one punch and, and get all that back. Yep, it's over. Dang, they ain't like the men. Like you, they be hugging each other afterwards. And you know, women, she just gave her some dab, like, good fight. Like, and the other girl, she ain't want to give her no dab. It's like they were. I guess more personal when it comes to women. It, it means something different, I guess. It's different out here, y'all. You hear me? 
What's up to everybody in the chat? Appreciate y'all for tapping in. Arr, arr, arr. Team K9 in the building. Let's go, champions. We are champions. Hit the like button when you tap in. Hit the like button. Whoop that trick, which is the like button. Whoop it, y'all. Boom, replay, overhand right, my favorite punch. Then she got the way of the right hand, boom, of her opponent. The right hand came from her opponent, she got the way. She should have came back with the left hook. Oh, but her opponent came back with a jab. Yikes. Overhand right, she supposed to came back, she supposed to roll up under there. Overhand right, oh, straight right hand, bam, left hook after that. Ooh, she gave, oh, man. That sponsor hit her with some, some stiffies, some stiff ones. Real stiff ones. Wow. Oh, decision. Let me go. Let's hear the decision, y'all. Oh, Oscar happy he went and gave her a handshake. She must be somebody she trying he trying to get some money from. Cause I ain't see him step up there to give um Cobbs some dap. He giving he giving her some dap. Uh, they both speak Spanish to each other. They both Mexican, so you already know they're gonna stick together. WBC champ, that girl can fight. SB said her husband got the ring, ring uh, magazine. I mean, a ring belt up. Well, don't never play like that no more. In the red shirt. Yeah. Yeah, you're right, JP. Showing Terrence Crawford taking pictures with some of the fans. Yeah, he do got that Kevin Durant here. Yeah, all that money with all them naps. At least brush your hair, boy. You got millions. <laughs> you can't be fresh down from down from your chin to your feet, but your neck up. It's like stop. It's over. Some cats don't care. At the end of the day, they're going to still scream for him when you the champ or you pound for pound. It's over. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, Jolo Diaz get another, another opportunity. November the 5th. You got one more fight to go, y'all. And it's over. Yeah, when, when hey, Jose, when he was pretty boy Floyd, he was a bad dude. Oh, man. Definitely, I appreciate y'all hitting the like button. We at K9 Boxing. Appreciate y'all for sure. Oh man, Fight Night Updated presented by Ortiz. Uh, he had twelve hundred dollars. They betting on him to beat McKinson, seven hundred tie, and two thousand plus. They all this bet stuff going on. Man, I'm done with that betting stuff. 
I would bet push-ups. I would bet that. But the money, no, nah, we would bet push-ups, we would bet t-shirt, and we would bet all kind of stuff. So, yeah, no, but money, no, 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 no. I bet you a dollar ninety-nine. We might bet twenty. I might go to high house. I might say twenty. It's a fun bet. All the other stuff, stop it. No, it's over. It's over. It's actually lasting a little longer than I thought. Oh, we got some good food in there, SB. I definitely need you to hook me up, champ. The um, Taco Bells, the Tia Taco Bell. Oh, it's over. Yeah. Oh, winner by split decision. I like this. Yeah, enjoy. Oh yeah, I can I can actually say something on here. Enjoy the fights. We over here on uh, Twitter, y'all too. Go to Twitter. Y'all wanna tap in? Y'all can tap in. On Twitter, too. And can comment. You know that, SB? I wasn't even thinking about that, though. I'm surprised you ain't say nothing. No, I wasn't thinking about it. You wasn't thinking about that. I'm thinking about it now. We three hours in this, boy. You hear me? Yeah. Man, finally the main event is coming up, y'all. Finally, Stop it. but we had we was on this boy for three hours before that happened, huh? Three hours, y'all. That's okay. Patience is virtual. And now, the grand finale. Yeah, guns blazing. Now, the winner. I wonder if the winner takes on Tans Crawford or Errol Spence. Tell him again, JP. Like and subscribe. Hey, school. Hey, I'm trying to take these people to school, bro. I'm schooling them. I'm good, my dog. Yes, yeah, stop it. Virgil Ortiz trying to stop it tonight. Ooh, wow. They showing the right hand. You just hit this other guy with just now. That boy was gone. Who else? You see that, that right hand? Ooh. Uh, that hook. That boy got high life for days. Ooh. Oh, oh. He whooping the man. He gave Maurice Hooker a uh, beat down. Dang. No wonder Maurice Hooker wasn't the same no more. Look at these combinations. Boy, that boy throwing combinations on top of combinations. I look forward to seeing this guy. Ortiz. I, y'all. Out of sight, out of mind, so easy to forget about who you are, what you can do, and how good you are. Until they bring that back, until they show a throwback Thursday, a flashback Friday. You know, I want to see Virgil T's in there with Tans Crawford. Put him in the ring with Crawford. You know, if Crawford can't get a fight, for Errol Spence next, put the top guns in there with the top number one contenders. Okay, if they don't fight each other, put Errol Spence in there with Boost Enos. But make sure you put the money up. Because Errol is not going to do it if the money ain't there. If you put him, you should think he all this and all that, and he's good as you, you know, portray him to be. Make it make sense. And I bet you Errol Spence take that fight. Make it make sense for Terrence Crawford to fight Virgil Ortiz and bet you it happened. But I'm with JP on this one. I want to see Virgil Ortiz versus Jared Enos. Absolutely. We don't want that short notice stuff. Uh, 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 uh.
No, Jose, I never heard of, heard of, that, heard of him. I never heard of uh, McKinson until tonight. Everybody going to know who he is if he can pull off an upset. But I have never heard of him. No, to, no, no, no. Yeah, this is some good stuff right here. I wish we could have been did this. Let's say better late than never, though. My man's in them, Sergio Moore. We had him on the show not too long ago, doing a live commentary on the zone. They got a good guy on this show. Somebody that knows boxing, which is a good look. Always a good look. Now, how long are they going to talk to us? Cause I do want to know. The main event is next. Finally. Uh-oh. Hey. Uh-oh. Hey, SB, did you ever see um Jake Paul running from... Uh... Wow, we got to put the shorts up. Got to be a good one, champ. Wow. Let me see. Yeah, he comfortable, say, look, it's about to go down. Let me see. So, yeah, McKinson's on his way in the ring, y'all. Just to let y'all know. McKinson's on his way to the ring. He's undefeated, so he don't know how to lose. So that's definitely a good look. That's a long ring walk. <laughs> Man, where is he coming from? <laughs> that boy is, he ain't got into the arena yet. Jeremiah, whoever the ring announcer, Jeremiah. Let's get ready to rumble. Oh, it's a title eliminator. That's a good look. Yeah, good look. Uh, 
Ah. Finally coming out, y'all. So that's a good look. McKinson finally making it to the ring, y'all. How long? How long? Chance of a lifetime. Chance of a lifetime, y'all. <sighs> Boy, sorry it's taking a long time. For um both guys getting a ring. But it is what it is. I hope the um the fight don't be as long as this ring walk. <laughs> we gonna talk. Man, they clapping for him. The favorite guy to win is on his ring. Is on his way to the ring. Now the suit that he got on looking kind of nice. How long? Oh, hope not long. I hope not long. Exactly. All knockouts versus some knockouts. A different ball game. No, nah, no, nah, Jose. Never heard of him. Never heard of him, champ. Finally, listen, this man is finally in the ring. No, he's on his way walking to the ring. Finally. How long? Not long. It's about to jump off, y'all. Finally. Oh, there it go. Oh. Oh. Oh, they showing highlights. Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. Can you, can you give me a sandwich or something? I need a piece or something. It's, uh, yeah, so Ortiz, they, they uh, showed his highlights. And now he's on his way to the ring. Finally. Long time coming with the red and black. Looking sharp. Straight puncher. Oh, yeah, he's going for the knockout. Tough guy. I think the best fighters that um, Oscar De La Hoya has on his team is is Jamie Mugua and Virgil Ortiz. Oh, Ryan Garcia. So he got three heavy hitters. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, all of Mexican. So... How long will this fight be? About to find out. Now, one thing you got to realize, too, is that
Virgil Ortiz's opponent, McKinson. It's a southpaw. But he's 22 and 0 with only two knockouts. Stop it! <laughs> two knockouts. Oh, wow. Two knockouts. So there you have it. So if it's a knockout, it's going to have to be coming from Virgil Ortiz. Virgil Ortiz is 18 and 0 with 18 knockouts. Let me rewind that. The man has a 100% knockout ratio. So everybody he's stepped in the ring with has tasted canvas. So, and you know he has an opponent that's in front of him that has no power, has nothing to keep him off of him. So Virgil Ortiz would be on McKinson like a K-9 T-shirt. He going to be on him, y'all. And I can just about guarantee you he'd be screaming, stop! It's over. It's over. Finally, the main event at K9 Boxing. Let the beatings begin. Arr, 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 arr. It's a dog fight. It's time, y'all. Oh, yeah, Zerto, he a beast, too. I didn't even know you was here. I had to say something to get you rammed up, champ. Oh, he said the fight will last two rounds. Or tease by Stop it! Murder. Wow. You sure about to find out? Hey, 18 and 0? With 18 knockouts? Let me rewind that. 18 and 0 with 18 knockouts? That man got that egg. That man got that egg, y'all. Uh oh. Man, listen, the ring announcer sound like Michael Buffer. Only thing he hasn't said is, let's get ready to rumble. Because if he do, he going to get sued. Oh, man, so what's going to be his catch frame? Whoop that trick. Whoop that trick. Y'all make sure y'all tap in. Y'all hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel and hit the notifications. Get at me, y'all. Oh, Virgil Ortiz. He showed him. He beat the brakes off Maurice Hooker. Wow. Oh, that's probably why um, Terrence Crawford want to fight him. Beat his boy up. Michael McKinson. He won a unanimous decision in his last fight. But one thing that um, OTs don't know how to do is go the distance. He's going for the knockout, SB. He's a knockout artist. 18 over 18 knockouts. Nah, but it's like he got them packs. Six packs. I ain't talking about beer. The abs. Oh, Virgil OTs got them abs too. Normally, Mexicans can't take it to the body. Boy, his last bout was August the 14th, so it's been over a year since he fought. Almost over a year. He fought, what, what, August the 14th, 2021 with a TKO. Uh-oh. They love him, boy. Listen, they, they love him. I bet you it's crowded. SB Thompson ain't nobody going to be there for him. I see it's crowded now, champ. Well, we're going to find out in a minute because they're only showing the first first few rows. And normally they don't show the whole arena, especially if it ain't, if it ain't full, if it ain't sold out, so... A lot of the um the networks are smart about that. It look a little crowded from from what I'm looking at, SB. Like I say, they only showing you know the f first few rows. Oh, uh, how long, SB? 
Not long. How long? Not long. Here we go, y'all. Stop it! South Park, you might be crafty, though. Look. Like you ready, look. Round one. Here we go, SB. The face-off. Oh, good little jab. The jab. You already in here. Uh-oh. Yeah, listen. He's showing Ortiz. Boy, I ain't going nowhere. So what? I ain't got no power. I got the power from stopping you knocking me out. For sure that. They can bet all they want to bet on MGM. Bet I ain't going nowhere. We gonna show, find out quickly. Good body shot, head shot from the underdog, McKinson. Good little left uppercut from McKinson. He know you in a dog fight. He know. Okay, we already know what my man trying to do. He had 18 and 0, 18 knockouts. You already know he gonna try to get me up out of there. McKinson holding his own. South Paul throwing uppercuts. Oh, but listen, he is forced to fight, and I think that's danger. Shout out to Mexico and hope he didn't rape somebody for real. Danger! That's how he used to say it. Uh-oh. Man, listen. My man McKinson is trying his best to stay, you know, stay long. And he good, he landed a good straight left hand just now. Oh, he's making it in a fight. Look, I'm undefeated for a reason. Uh-oh. He keep, keep, keep getting hit with those left hooks by Virgil Ortiz. It ain't gonna be long. How long? Not long. Virgil's putting pressure on McKinson. McKinson. Doesn't have good balance. He just landed the overhand left though, McKinson. But yeah, McKinson is getting roughed up on the inside. And the referee is smartly letting him fight on the inside. McKinson looks like he's using his head. The referee should warn him from that. We don't want somebody getting head bunted by mistake or on purpose. Virgil Ortiz got his hands up and punching. McKinson is forcing. Virgil Ortiz to show his hand. Oh, good uppercut from Virgil Ortiz. And Mahenson wants to hold. This is not a slow dance. We are now socially. SB, teach me how to social. Oh, good overhand left from McKinson. But the pressure that Virgil Ortiz is putting on McKinson. Oh, another left hook on the chin from Virgil Ortiz to Kinson's chin. McKinson is fighting for his life. I don't think the fight is going... Three rounds. Oh, go ahead left. Oh, he catches McKinson. And McKinson's hurt bad. And Oscar De La Hoya shadow boxing, basically telling Virgil to finish him. Oh, man. How long? Not long. Oh, what happened? Somebody's cut. Uh-oh. Somebody got hit with an elbow or a hair bunt. Accidental hair bunt. I think he did it on purpose. You can't. Listen, before you knock me out, take this head. Hit that man with his head. Oh, my goodness. And Virgil Ortiz is bleeding. Will that stop him? Will that make him even more mad? Oh, is that the bell? Oh, overhand left. Because Virgil Ortiz is not respecting his opponent. He might run into some uh, scared man, a dangerous man. Oh, man. And don't force a rat in the corner. He go jump back out at you. Wow, that was a good first round. Good first round by Virgil Ortiz. He might have won the war. But he might be losing the battle because he's cut. They need to show me the replay because I don't even saw. I don't even know how he got cut. I knew it was a head bone. I think it was an elbow. Because, you know, once McKinson got hurt, you know, he went in survival mode and threw something at him. I don't know if it was the hair. I got cut with hair before. When I fought uh, Kasim, Kasim Uma, he cut me with his nappy hair. He got dreadlocks and he... Ran across my face and cut me. Do you remember that, SB? Wow. Let's go, champ. You said no? Oh, you're getting old, champ. It's over. It's over. Wow. Yeah, I think this is going to be over. I think this round, that man, listen. This guy, um, Ortiz Jr., has a lot of pressure. Look like he got called a good hook, though. And listen, my man's 
but Kenson is trying to do everything to keep him off. And and Ortiz is getting mad, like, bro, why is you pushing my head down? Like, this is called boxing. Oh, this is the fight game. I'm here to fight. And you already know what it is. Let me put these glasses on so I can see clearly everything that's happening. Ortiz is trying to knock the man out. And it look like McKenson is just trying to survive. At the same time, he's trying to catch um, Ortiz slipping. So Ortiz running in there and, and listen, McKenson is trying to catch him with counter punches. And Mc, McKenson's not bad. You know, he's just a little open. Like, his head is there to get caught. But, you know, like I said, he ain't undefeated for nothing. And Oscar is just licking his chops, hoping that Ortiz can get in there and finish the job. Because Oscar def desperately needs a superstar in his camp. Ryan, Ryan Garcia got the followers. Ortiz got the power. 18-0 and 18 knockouts. Jamie Maguire has a following. But I think Ortiz has a chance to be the man. But he really has to be careful because, um, you know, McKinson is kind of crafty. He ain't bad at all. You got to remember, one thing he know how to do is go to distance. So he going to try his best to, to go rounds because that's what he do. He only has two knockouts out of all his wins. Yeah, out of 22 wins, he only has two knockouts. So he's known for going to distance. So Ortiz going to have to push the pedal to the metal. He gonna get a knockout. And you gotta remember, he ain't in there with a guy who done been knocked out before. He done, he's in there with a guy who has never lost. So while we think it might be easy, it ain't gonna be easy. Look good in the first round, but the fight is going longer than I expected, just on on the strength of McKenson not having no power. And Ortiz Jr. having power. And maybe that cut slowed down Ortiz a little bit more. But boy, he's still getting in the inside, hands up, and throwing bolos. Uh-oh, Jay, hey, listen. McKinson is using his elbow. Referee ain't saying nothing. The man gonna get um, cut again with something else illegal? Stop it! No, we don't want that to happen. Oh, yeah, he's definitely out of Mexico. He's a tough guy, too. He is putting major pressure on McKinson. Man, McKinson has to be in the greatest shape that he's ever been in his life. Because, listen, that man is putting pressure on him like he Mike Tyson. Yeah, I would like, if Pitbull Cruz, Isaac Cruz, was a welterweight, I would love to see him in there with Victor Ortiz. Or Virgil Ortiz. Virgil Ortiz with a good jab. They showing the replay. Another good jab. It's making that man face turn corners. Good jab for Ortiz. That man strong. That, that jab is like a right hand. Man. And my man McKinson like, oh, man, another one? He got to go out there and fight for his life. Another round. It's like every round, he is fighting for survival. Oh, good left hand by, I think, Kenson. I mean, they both ran at each other after he threw the left hand. So I think both guys believe that something happened. Ortiz, guard is up, the Mike Tyson style, and he's punching. Hands up and punching. He's slipping side to side, and he's putting major pressure on McKinson. And McKinson, hey, don't have power. So what you gonna do to keep Ortiz off you when you don't have power? You're gonna have to hold like you're doing now. And he's got caught overhand left. Time, uh oh. Somebody mouthpiece that fell out their mouth. See McKinson smart. He know how to go rounds. So he done spit the mouthpiece out. He like he like ref he like corner man. Why are you pushing a mouthpiece back in my mouth so fast? I'm trying to get a little time. 
And man, listen, he getting out the way though. He crafty. Look, he avoiding the punches that Ortiz is throwing. Like Ortiz is fighting like a desperate man. Like he's trying his best to get Henson out of there, McKinson. McKinson ain't going nowhere though. Look, McKinson had a duck game out of his world, boy. Remember Duck Duck Goose? Look, he duck ducking and missing is Ortiz. Ortiz is throwing some hard shots. If, oh, if my man McKinson can just time him with something straight down the middle, oh man, just right down the middle. Boop. Are you throwing all these hard punches at him? Man, you are swearing down. It ain't the same fighter because he only got two knockouts. And what McKinson need to do, if not nothing else, go to the body. Like if your opponent is swinging for the fences and throwing all these big punches. A big punch that a person throws and misses takes more out of him than the one he lands. Good body shot from um, Virgil Ortiz. And it's the Virgil Ortiz show. I mean, all McKinson is doing is surviving. I mean, he's just trying not to go to sleep. And so far, he isn't going to sleep. Stay ready. You ain't got to get ready. So, yeah, he came ready, if not nothing else. He got his track shoes on. Them body shots is hard, though. Ooh, he is. Man, listen, Ortiz is hitting this man with everything. I think he going to beat the life out of um, McKinson. I think eventually McKinson is just going to just gonna quit on the stool because, you know, he's getting hurt by the air. Virgil Ortiz missed a shot, and I think it's hurting McKinson. And then McKinson gets shoved with the shoulder from being too close and not fighting by his opponent, Virgil Ortiz. And yeah, every now and then, McKinson is landing some. He grab pushes and th punches. With eight seconds left in the round, this pressure is busting. It's wearing McKinson out. And he is not, I'm telling you, he's not going to last the distance. Now, don't get me wrong. If he can just throw something straight down the middle because Ortiz do not respect him at all. He's like he's in there with, with a boy. Who put that boy in there with that man? He cares less on who he's in there with. Hands down, Ortiz is winning by a long shot. Not close at all, champ. Not close. I missed the replay. We just it was the they showing good body shot. Oh, that was no, that was a slap. They showed um Ortiz hit hit on um, McKinson with a body shot, but it was a slap. The one he didn't go nowhere. Ortiz, boy, they 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 matching him up correctly. They put him in there with the right people. Killer body. Joe and head of far. You're right. That's a version we need to focus on going to the body more. Forget the head. The man is blocking the head shots. Oh, yeah. I bet you McKinson team telling him, like, bro, you got to fight back. Cause if you don't fight back, the man going to keep putting pressure on you. So better go out on your shield than to go out, period, with nothing, or not doing anything. I can see why McKinson's undefeated though. Like, he got good boxing skills. Like, he got a good IQ. Like, just think, he just threw a nice, nice little right hook. And like he did, look, he's a lot better than a lot of the fighters that um Virgil Ortiz has faced. And at the end of the day, you got to remember though, this is a title eliminator. So, you got to remember one thing about it: McKinson is not going going away quickly or easily. He know if he can. Oh, good little hook by both guys. It looked like, it looked like man, it looked like McKinson was about to go to sleep. Oh, like he ran with his head. Oh, what was that? McKinson is fighting dirty. He's trying to knock Ortiz out with his head. Uh-oh. A little dirt going on now. McKinson trying to do whatever he can to survive. But, hey, he's doing better than I thought he would do. I thought he would be gone by now. Virgil Ortiz is putting pressure on him. Now, could Virgil Ortiz put this kind of pressure on a Terrence Crawford? Stop it. No, I, I don't think so. Can you put this kind of pressure on um, Boots Enos? No, I don't think so. Errol Spence? No, I don't think so. But he showed putting the pressure on McKinson. And McKinson just ain't got no power. 
But he's trying though. Like, you know, he know how to get out the way. But these punches are adding up. The man's whole body is red. The color of Canelo Alvarez's hair. He's been hit to the body hard. Every time he tries to hold, Ortiz elbows him or pushes him off like, uh-uh, don't hold me. He gets rough, real rough and rugged whenever McKinson tries to hold. But Kinson, like I say, he's he's crafty, though. He's he's a survivor. I'm a survivor. I'm in the Vizor. What's that song, B uh, Beyonce and them song, Involve? Man, McKinson's a survivor. And he's doing a good job at surviving right now. In round four. But the pressure that's being put on him by McKinson. What what a what match made? Like the matchmakers for this right here fight did a great job. Oscar De La Hoya and them are real good at, at putting their fighters in position to look good. I mean title eliminator against a guy that's undefeated with more wins than your 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 um fighter but no power. Wow. Who do you think made the matches for um Canelo Alvarez? Oscar De La Hoya. One of the best promoters in the game. Appreciate everybody for the the likes. Appreciate everybody. Appreciate the super chat. Yeah, I appreciate the cash app. At K9 Boxing. Man, listen, I'm surprised a man lasted this long. When you a winner, you a winner. And that's facts. Same pressure, same fight. Round for round for round. Pressure. Virgil Ortiz, hands up. Hopping in, body shots from Ortiz. And McKinson is moving, ducking and dodging. Throwing punches here and there, but getting out the way. Getting out the way now. He is not trying to win at all. And they asking Terrence Crawford, what does he see? And you already know. They happy that Terrence Crawford is there so they can say, how do you feel about a fight with Virgil Ortiz? SB, can I hear what they saying to Terrence Crawford? Can I hear what's going on, Terrence Crawford? Oh, good straight left hand on McKinson, see? Good body shot from Ortiz. Yeah, listen, my man want to get out the way. McKinson is man, his duck game is good. My man's on Ortiz Jr. is throwing darts at McKinson and missing. Oh, good little hook, though, from Ortiz. But then straight left hand comes back with for McKinson. Like, McKinson, he ain't no punk. You know, he's trying his best. It's just his best isn't enough. Good body shot from um, Ortiz. Ortiz having target practice. And he's throwing everything. Like He, only have, he ain't even, he not even worrying about if he misses or not because you know, McKinson don't have the power to knock him out or make him pay. Make him miss, make him pay? No, he can't make him pay once he misses because Henson is a, a light hitter. And Ortiz is throwing bombs at him. I'm talking about 
I'm talking about, man, like, he throwing grenades at this man. Yeah, look, he's trying to line up another grenade. He's getting closer and closer. And Oscar hopes that he catches him because he knows the stock is going to go up. And he's throwing, but yeah, he ain't catching him. So, hey, my man Doug game is good, though. So, oh, man, they got, listen, they they got on, on the zone. They got KSI. Then they come about to fight on pay-per-view. Unbelievable. Wow. Now, it seems like a circus when this guy KSI fights, you know, because Jay Paul has proven, you know, to really take boxing serious. KSI, you know, he fought maybe once or twice, but then I ain't heard from him since. But now he's back in the game. Maybe he realized that $40 million that Jay Paul made last year, he could be making this year or within a year or two years of staying active. In the replays, we just saw Rock'em Sock'em. One man punching, the other man ducking. You know the man punching was Virgil Ortiz. And the man ducking, you already know, it's McKinson. Fighting like a flyweight. Flyweights you normally know, don't have power. And he's not showing any power. Hey, but hey, he's not being hit or hurt. Okay, so, on an unofficial scorecard, Chris Mannix has McKinson winning one round. That's the first round. That's it. Other than that, it's a shutout. 49-46, Ortiz Jr. So, yeah, if if um, Ortiz is going to be able to do anything with Terrence Crawford, he's going to have to know how to get guys like McKinson up out of there. I mean, but this might be a growth spurt in his in his career that he finally go the distance with somebody, you know? Because um, just think about it. You're not gonna be able to knock everybody out. And if he gets to fight with Terrence Crawford next, Terrence Crawford is crafty. He's not gonna be just letting you just walk in there and just hit him, hurt him, and knock him out. And once again, like I say, Golden Warriors great at matchmaking. I think they're the best matchmakers. In boxing, just think, who is um Virgil T set up to fight? Like if he win this fight, who can he fight next? The winner. Well, he can fight a southpaw. Who he's fighting now? A southpaw. So if he wins this fight, the southpaw that he will be fighting for the belt is Terrence Crawford. So this is a smart move by Golden Boy. He's giving, he's giving um, Virgil Ortiz target practice. Good left hand laying by McKinson, finally. So yeah, because you know, Terrence Crawford gonna be fighting Southpaw the whole fight. So at least they giving him a good look. You know what I mean? And the guy he fighting is crafty, like you know, he not going nowhere. You know, he's I ain't gonna say he's giving as much as he's getting, but he ain't going nowhere. Like he's there, giving. You know, Virgil Ortiz some rounds. Now, if Virgil Ortiz can get in there with Terrence Crawford in the next couple of months, if he can get Terrence Crawford to take that fight uh, right away, shoot, I'll give him a good chance. I ain't going to say that beating him, but making it a good fight with Terrence Crawford because Terrence Crawford ain't fought in a minute. And one thing that's undefeated for sure is rust. Another thing that's undefeated of course, it's father time, you know. And both these fighters right here, so far and for right now. But guess what? Oh, it is about to go down. Well, we like five five um, rounds away from um, Virgil Ortiz, what, going the distance for the first time and from McKinson facing his first L. He over there blinking, like his team talking to him. He's like, uh, 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 can you help me? Uh, 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 what you say? Uh, uh, what you talking about? Uh, uh, say something. Do something. Uh, 
Help me out. Man, it's going down, y'all. Look at Ortiz, y'all. Don't even look like he been in a fight yet. Well, his lip, his lip red, so you think I hit the lip once, maybe once or twice. That ain't nothing, though. That man ain't at work. Oh, Ortiz Jr. has never been past eight rounds, y'all. So, hey, McKinson is taking him in deep waters. Oh, man, listen. Virgil Ortiz is winning every round. Hey, I might get him one round. McKinson is one, maybe one round. Virgil Ortiz is shedding McKinson out. All McKinson is doing is... Punching and ducking, ducking and punching, holding, hitting, moving, moving. He is just playing it safe. He is trying to go the distance. Yeah, he'll throw punches here and there, here, but he is clearly overmatched. He is out of his league by far. So, if you definitely Virgil Ortiz all day. He he's headhunting a little too much, but he is walking. McKinson down. McKinson is holding his ground here and there. And he coming to punching here and there. Like both guys just kind of punch and hit each other just now. But then one guy's going back. Of course, that's McKinson. And the guy that's going forward is Virgil Ortiz. Hands up. Peekaboo style like Mike Tyson. Um, jab, check hook, spins. McKinson spins, hops around McKinson, moves around McKinson. He's moving to the right, moving to the left. Oh, right up because that hook from. Virgil Ortiz, left hand from McKinson, then a combination from Ortiz, and a good body shot, another head shot from Ortiz. And Ortiz is trying to pour it on with one minute and seven seconds in round seven. And then he spins McKinson. And the referee tells him, don't do that. Protect yourself at all times. McKinson is being pressured. He is being forced to fight. He has never been in the ring with somebody as strong as Virgil, Virgil Ortiz or as solid as Virgil Ortiz. And Virgil Ortiz is just throwing everything at him with the kitchen sink. And McKinson, you know, he's not being hit with everything either, though. He's being hit. Right? Virgil Ortiz will throw 10 shots. He'll land two or three, you know. And that's good for McKinson because if he was landing every punch that he throw, this fight would have been over with already. So McKinson is surviving. Good body shot. Oh, if we said, whoop, low blow. Keep your, keep the hand put keep the hands up, Ortiz. It looked like um, McKinson showboating a little bit, hands down, trying to get um Virgil Ortiz to fall for the okie doke. Another round, four. Virgil Ortiz. Round after round after round for Virgil Ortiz. I got boo speed in Ortiz. The pressure is getting to him seen and unseen. I'm rolling with Enos. 77. We rolling with Enos if there was a fight. A shout out, y'all. Yeah, it's a shout out. But, you know, I think that Virgil T's corner, they so used to getting a knockout, they're not going to be satisfied with just winning. They want the knockout. Round number eight, same old game. I would say same old fight. It's one way. It's one way. My man Virgil Ortiz is going down a one-way street. He's doing whatever he wants to do. And McKinson is can't open up really because he don't have the firepower. But hey, he's there. Hey, listen. 
He ain't throwing a towel in, and neither is his team. Good jab, poor jab from both guys. And McKinson bumps his opponent and throws a left hand. And Virgil Ortiz is showing vulnerability that, you know, you get in there and you slick. You know, you can't, you can't hit slick guys. Like, he's missing more punches than he's landing against McKinson. And if they think that Virgil Ortiz can do this against Terrence Crawford, then they got another thing coming. Good jab from Virgil Ortiz. A good strong jab, too. Good body shot from Virgil Ortiz. And I think either way it go, as long as Virgil Ortiz don't get knocked out, I think this is going to be really some good experience for him because he's never been a distance. Good jab from Virgil Ortiz and the pressure that he's putting on McKinson is great pressure. But McKinson don't know what to do. He's never faced somebody that was as good as um, Virgil Ortiz because if he, if he would have, you know, he probably would have taken an L. But he's undefeated and he's moving. And getting out of there, he ain't trying to trade war stories with Virgil Ortiz because Virgil Ortiz is the bigger and stronger fighter. Virgil Ortiz throws a hard overhand right and misses. Because guess what? McKinson has a good defense. McKinson with the check hook. And even though he didn't land it and he had the duck game, he's ducking good again. McKinson's ducking good and he's out the way. Get out the way, get out the way now. He's a survivor. And then overhead right from Virgil Ortiz. So any bombs that Virgil Ortiz seems to throw, he's missing. Like, McKinson is smart enough not to get caught with bombs. Good body shot, though, from Virgil Ortiz. He should have been there early on, and this fight might be over with. Another body. Oh, finally, he did delivering. Down goes McKinson. How long? Uh-oh. Not long. He looked over at his corner, McKinson, and said, I'm, I'm not done. He said, don't throw the towel in. We got 16 seconds. Will he survive? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Or Ortiz is a, a good finisher. Oscar is screaming, whoop that trick, whoop that trick. Oh, look at my man McKissing. I'm a runner. I'm a track star. Look at him. He gone. Your hands can't hit what your eyes can't see. And way to survive at K9 Boxing. It's a different story, seen and unseen. He's a runner. He's a track star. He got on his bicycle after that knockdown. I think it was a liver shot, too. You know, them liver shots is undefeated. Watch this liver shot. They're showing the replay. Boom. Ooh, right directly on the river. Oh, and it crippled McKinson. He couldn't do nothing but take a knee. It's over. If he get caught one, one more of those, it's over with. Uh-oh. How long? Uh-oh. Can Ortiz continue his knockout streak? Uh-oh. Another body shot. Dang, did he land another one? I didn't even see it. Apparently, neither did his opponent. Oh, like he about to quit. Uh-oh. Oh, he's he's getting up on wobbly legs. Oh, he don't want to continue. Look, he, he's stepping to the referee. Uh, sideways. Uh oh, it's over. One thing. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Stop it. It's over. The towel through the towel in. On oh, the corner through the towel in. The corner through the towel in. Guess what? 19 and 0 with 19 knockouts. There you have it. Virgil Ortiz. It's in the game, y'all. Welcome to K9 Boxing. And the winner is. Virgil Ortiz. There you have it. Let's go, champ. The thumbnail was already ready, SB. I can say what I want to say, champ. This me. This me. I say what I want to say, champ. 19 and 0. With 19 knockouts. Wow. It's over. It's over. Stop 
paix. Wow. That boy a dog. Another knockout. Wow. It's over. He did it, y'all. Man, Oscar's so happy. Oscar's not coming back. I see a stomach on him. Unless he gone do an exhibition against Bernard Hopkins. Maybe so. It's over. Wow. That boy, Virgil T, is tough. Yeah. He went to the body good, too, though. Man, listen, he went the round. Keith, you missed the body shot. That man was in agony, that power. I mean, you got to remember, he was he wasn't getting hit. Um, clean, you know, but he was getting hit. And eventually, them punches, they added up. That's, 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 that's right, Keith. He, TKO the undefeated fighter. Yeah, somebody had to save him. That was good. Happy they did. They should have probably been did that because he didn't like he had a chance of winning at all. It's over. Yeah, so wow. So now he's either mandatory I wonder to Terrence Crawford. I definitely want to hear this. Joe Cheese is over, champ. Oh, it stopped, SB. Wow. Man, that boy did it. That boy can fight. That boy's strong, strong. No, I think that was a WBO belt. That wasn't WBA. Seen and unseen boxing. That was a WBO belt I think he bought the fight for. The WBO belt belongs to Terrence Crawford. Yeah. It's over. Oh, yeah, I definitely want to hear what he's going to say. Is he going to call Crawford out? I'm about to tell y'all what he's talking about, y'all. I think he about to say, we want Crawford. What's up, 50 Crew? It was definitely a good fight. I'm going with Enos.
Ooh, what a good body shot. Oh, yeah. He kept going that body. I want to see what he's going to say. Is he going to call Terrence Crawford out or what? That's what I'm trying to see. They showing a replay. Boom. Ooh, good right uppercut to the body. Ooh, that hurt. They showing him hitting um, McKinson with the uppercut to the body. Boom. Ooh, another left hook to the body. <laughs> And body shots are crucial. Wow. I want to hear who do he want Crawford? Is he saying we want Crawford? He go out there and be Crawford, boy, he'll be a superstar. Oh, yeah, ask him about the him now. Oh, you're asking him how much of this and that is he taking into the fight? How being hospitalized and all this other st stuff. He said, um, Terrence Crawford a little tied up right now, but he's looking forward to that fight. I wouldn't say nothing about nothing being tied up about nothing. I want to fight Terrence Crawford. That's what I would have said if I was him. Because until the fight is a, a signed and dealt and delivered, I'm going to say, I want Crawford. You know what I mean? Throw your name out there. That's going. You can throw your name. In the same hat, Errol Spence is throwing his, hand, his name in. He said Crawford's name. You ain't have to dare him. Them body shots were crucial. Wow. Thank y'all for the likes. Continue to push the like button. And if, like I say, if y'all are new to the channel, man, hit the subscribe button. Share the YouTube channel. The Facebook. Oh, man, it's over. Wow. Uh-oh. We see we're gonna see Ortiz in there in a minute. And what they need to do is continue to make him help him get better by putting him in there with South Paws. South Paws that can get him rounds because if if Errol Spence wins against Terrence Crawford, he can still possibly fight against a South Paw, which is Errol Spence. If Terrence Crawford who fights that South fights South Paw, wins against Errol, uh, Errol Spence, he can fight Terrence Crawford. So he needs to be Fighting Southpaws. Look, doesn't look like he's gonna be fighting um Errol Spence next. Doesn't look like he's gonna fight Terrence Crawford next. He needs to be in the ring with a Southpaw. Next. Because he's gonna fight one or the other.
they said, um, Charles Manson said, in his mind, he's ready for Terrence Crawford. Wow, that boy. Wow, it's over, y'all. That was good work, y'all. They get that boy the mic, like, bro, you the man. You can hold the mic. That's what we do. On this own. I appreciate you. Singing and unseen boxing. Super truthful. Super truthful. Much love, brother. JP, appreciate you. Yeah. Appreciate y'all for tapping in. Definitely hope y'all enjoyed the live watch party. And um, tomorrow we'll be live again at K9 Boxing. Live sperm. A bark, a bite, an overhand right. Appreciate y'all. Good night. Arr, arr, arr. Stop it. Good night, y'all. Cheers. Arr.